All right, all right, everybody, I'm just doing a sound check here, making sure everything's good. If y'all can hear me, let me know in the chat. Basically, uh, folks, we will be starting here in about five minutes, four or five minutes with Nick Shaheen, lead trader from the Options Inner Circle chat room. That's where he's posted the entire day, Monday to Friday. And uh, he's actually in a session right now, but he will be coming uh, to this session that we have right now. He's in a private meeting, but he will be done uh, in a few minutes and he'll be here with us. So we have a pack session. Uh, I'll come back here in a couple of minutes. Just wanted to do a quick sound check, guys. We'll see you in a few. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome here to the session. My name is Rodrigo. We're going to be here with Nick Shaheen, lead trader from the Options Inner Circle chat room. Uh, he currently was in a meeting, but I think he'll be coming up here in a few with us in the chat. Uh, while we do get things rolling here, give me a one in the chat if you've been here before. Give me a two in the chat. Never mind, screw that. One in the chat if you have never been here, okay? Two in the chat if you've been here before, okay? Doug one chris one clifton keith what's going on keith brian wilson in the house barry andrew frank putman what's up all right let us know guys that way we know how to take the conversation make sure everybody gets the most out of it we do have a packed uh session here for today we're going to be here for probably one to two hours depending how the how the vibe goes here with you guys uh linda first time good to see that brian marcus don vito praveen okay so we're going to be talking about trade ideas, options, education. We're going to go through different types of trade, uh, trades, credit put spreads, covered calls, condors, calls and puts. We're going to show you the options chain. This is probably going to be the best session you've ever seen when it comes to not just learning, but how to apply that learning to profit with Nick Shaheen. He's a monster. He's been with Benzinga for 11 years. He's helped me personally on my trading. And I'm telling you, this is something you don't want to miss. Make sure you pay attention. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's what we'll be covering at the end of the session. We will be covering trade ideas and from there, you know, we'll, we'll get some ideas from you guys, show you a little bit of what Nick does in his room. So let's go ahead and bring on the man of the hour, Nick Shaheen. Let's Damn go. son. Where'd you find this? Hey, hey, hey. Hey Nick, what's going on, man? How you doing? Doing well, trying to get back into the swing of things. I did not have a live session this morning because I was traveling and today was my day back. So you have me. You have my attention. I'm not exhausted. I'm all refreshed. So about um, time. About time, man. We got a good fresh market to cover here, 2023. Uh, you've done very well with the members 2022 on your inner circle chat room. 
And uh, you just came over from the Sunday session. Is that correct? Did you have it? This no, Sunday? no, not today. Oh, not today. Um, this week I, uh, I had an, uh, I was traveling yesterday. So yesterday was my traveling home and I didn't get home until like nine 30 in the evening. So this is when, what, what you're referring to is I do homework on Saturday and we get together on Sunday and we do a live webinar and I compile the homework into a list that looks like this, where they can take it home. And usually it has a video that is about two hours. Uh, yeah, today I skipped it because I wasn't home to do the homework. So, but it works out okay. I still will do a video tonight for all the members uh, to kind of tell them what I'm looking for this, this coming week and what are the potential pitfalls that we might face and where are the opportunities. Uh, those videos are extremely valuable for me as a trader to know what I'm doing. So right. last um, week we crushed it. The week before that we crushed it. By that, I mean, we did, we're not surprised. Like, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Nope. We didn't care what the news was and we traded it flawlessly. Right. So, um, you, you know, you, you don't do it need every day. News. You do it every day in the room. So it's easy we do it every day, kind of um, but yeah. even if you can't be uh, with me. So in case you guys don't know, for I see a lot of ones in there. Tons I see some ones. twos. So the twos are the ones that have seen this spiel before, and they've been to one of our webinars. And um, for the one, uh, for the people whose this is their first time, what uh, on top of the service that Bazinga and I provide for you guys, I, we decided, I decided last year, I can't remember exactly when to open it up to sharing my screen like you will in a second. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to take away your screen and um, yes. Okay. So what you're seeing here is what you can see all day, every day. And that's an extra level of service from me to you, which means that I'm giving you about eight to nine hours of my day every day in order to trade the day actively or to answer questions live on the fly that you may or may not have. It doesn't mean that you must be in there. This is extra. So I don't think you'll find anyone else even through Benzinga or outside of Benzinga that can do that for you. Um, I'm here for you eight to nine hours a day, every day. So um, if you have questions, you can go in there and you will have an immediate answer with voice. I will share my, I'm sharing my screen. I will answer with voice, not with video. And if you don't want to do that for whatever reason, you can even pop into the live a chat room it's not a live trading room this is a chat room where we can chat like and people like this person and go big right now just a few minutes ago popped in and was sharing some resource on thinkorswim so to try to help uh, read the options because somebody was struggling with that and then uh, somebody asked okay um i have a question about baba can you help with the analysis i kind of answered the question here um it was because financial being released and wasn't true Okay, so I don't know what's happening with Baba. Um, I will check on that. So like just like that, this person on the weekend decided to ask about Baba, and I promised him I will look into Baba, and I will. Maybe we will now here today. So this is the kind of things go on. And then on top of that, every morning before the market opens, I will pop in here, and I will give you uh, my morning note with charts and the link to the live room with the password. And then I will update you middle of the day um, with a trade setup, at least one. If you're lucky enough to have time to be with me in the live room like we are right now, you will have dozens of trade opportunities every day, including iron condors. And I'll show you what those are and how we work them every day to deliver 20, 25% with not a lot of risk um, considering the reward. Um, also, we discuss intra like if you're a fast trader you can get in here get out here you will have amp as much time as as you want to give to be an active trader you will have opportunities and not just from me we have at least 300 traders every day live we have a couple of dozen that actually share their setups like they say i'm going along here i'm going out here i'm trimmed um, i got filled uh, i lost you see who does better and you see who does things that you can do and you chase. There are a lot of things I can't do because I'm busy. So I skip a lot of it, but I share what I do as well. And I'm usually pretty good at uh, corralling every effort. For example, minute to minute, I can tell them, put arrows. I expect this, I expect that. And the target is here and the target is that. And then I do setups like these. This is an iron condor that paid $160 uh, per contract in probably a couple of hours. 
Uh, this one uh, paid $110 in just probably a few hours without much effort. These pay without needing anything. I also point out really important levels, which are important so not to make any mistakes. Um, overall, throughout the week, I keep us focused. Like this is the morning note and I put a big red box. I said, we're consolidating inside of a long zone, a big zone. So don't do anything drastic at the top of it. Don't do anything drastic at the bottom of it. And if you want to be actively trading, you buy here, you sell here. In fact, look at this note here. This note was December 20th. I said, um, actually before, I said resistance. And active traders can buy puts. You can't see it, but I trust me, that's what it says. If somebody did that here and here and here and here, made money. And if somebody's doing it here, they're doing the right things with proper stop losses. So trade opportunity, support. Um, and I, I sometimes word it even easier than this. Let me see if I remember. I think uh, there we go, easier than this. So we have buyers, buyers, sellers, and I will add a few to update after the uh, price action. Uh, here's another note. The S&P is stuck in a very, very tight range. It has been important since November. This is for your benefit, like for tomorrow when the market opens. You should know this stuff. This is not um, natural. So there is market manipulation. If you want my guess, there was a lot of selling into year end for tax uh, losses. So you remember we we fell a year on, on the back of crappy stocks falling, like the arc-like stocks. So the whole year, people had huge losses on those stocks. I bet you anything they sold great giga caps, mega caps, Apple, Google, even Tesla, in order to harvest, uh, to offset those losses. They take advantage of the losses, the books and profits, and some great stocks that they've had for a long time to kind of like offset the stuff. That's the right. theory I have. So we, if that's the case, they want to hold the market back until they're eligible to buy those same stocks again without having a wash sale rule or something. It's a long shot, but so far, those long shots have played out pretty well for us. Why? We went long um, with the T minus two, uh, so transaction minus two, um, the, the last tax selling day, I believe, for big corporations was not the last day of the year. It was two days before that. So we went long on the dip. And um, if you stayed long, you're up big. If you trimmed, you're up even bigger. If you sold calls against those, you're up the most. And that's what I did. And I'm still long the IWM but those are runners. So free. I'm long right. for free. And I'm not alone. I shared everything live with everybody. So and De Dennis has a very interesting question. So I've tried to understand condors, um, but I'm only going to do calls and puts. So that's what I'm looking for. So you do, here's the thing. I don't know if we mentioned this, but Nick, you cater to all different types of trades. People that do condors, Absol try to put spreads, calls and Absolutely. puts. Absolutely. In, right? in fact, if you don't want to do options, you don't have to do options. I have a lot of people now. It's a growing number of people that are doing uh, futures and even options on the futures because they don't want to. They, they are bound by DDT. So the, if you have a smaller account, you can't do as many trades as you want. Uh, but um, if you're doing futures, you're, you can like it's a loophole. You don't have to deal with that. Uh, so, but even straight up futures traders, um, equity traders, I have a, a few that do a lot of stocks and they use the options in order to hedge their stocks. Like for example, uh, there's one person in particular, I don't think he's here today, has a ton of Apple stocks. And when I tell you a ton, it is a ton. Um, so he's actively selling calls every week in order to hedge his positions and he uses the money to buy puts in order to further hedge his position. So when you buy a put, if you don't know a lot about options, the be the easiest way to explain options on the put side, you know, they come in two flavors, calls and puts. Let me show you. So if we go here, there's calls on this side and puts on that side. Uh, so if you buy a put, you're actually uh, reserving the right to uh, sell shares at that price. And you pick whatever price you want. So let's say this was Apple, it's not. Uh, and you buy a put in Apple, then you pay money. In return, it's like insuring your car. This is no different. It's an asset. You're insuring your house, your health. You pay insurance. This would be insurance. And uh, you're expecting to lose that money. Otherwise, your stock is collapsing. And But in case it does collapse, then you, are, you have the right to sell your shares at that price, even if price falls way, way, way below that. Well, that costs money. So what he does is uh, he sells calls in order to buy those puts. So he sells something up here. 
to lower the cost of these. So in this case, he's at risk of closing his lungs, but at least he's protected. So if it goes to the moon, he stops profiting above this level. But if it collapses, he doesn't lose much. So this is kind of like protecting yourself with not a lot of money out of pocket. Sometimes it's free. So this person loves to trade stocks and he uses the options in order to hedge his bets. But now he's more actively also trading uh, iron condors, which are kind of fun. And if you don't know what that is, uh, this was one right there. Luckily, I have a picture of it. So this iron condor uh, said that the SPX will close between these two values. And that day it did. So how the hell did I know that the SPX closes between two values? Well, that's the magic we do in the room. And more often than not, we're very close with that. And if you are, you can make money without much pain. So you sell a put spread. Those are two, these two things. It's called the credit put spread, bull put spread, sometimes they call it. And you sell a call spread. So I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, so basically, you're going long and short inside a range. So if the S&P closes inside a box like this, oh, there's another one, <laughs> uh, inside a box like this, if you can call the close like four hours before the market closes, these are easy money if you can call the close. And we're pretty good at that. On Friday, it didn't work, but we knew that ahead of time. So we didn't enter one of these. Um, on Friday, it was a trend day and they exceeded all logic with the buying. It was like a relief rally of sort on some BS headlines. I cannot believe how stupid these people are. The markets, how stupid did they think we are to believe the garbage they're spewing uh, as far as why a price is moving? Prices are not moving. They're going sideways, consolidating, spending some time in order to have a shot up or down. I vote up, but let's see. Um, so iron condors, if you want to see what they look like, I think that's where we went from. Uh, so if I go to, uh, so a if I do a credit put spread, don't don't get too involved with what that actually means. So let's say I do this. This is a bullish position that says the the IWM on the 11th will be above 174. And if that's the case, I win money. Okay, so that's a bullish position for that. It doesn't need a rally. All it needs is the IWM close above 174. And then you win how much the money you collect up front. Okay, so that's bullish because you don't want it to fall too much. So if somebody takes the opposite side of that and does something like this, this part is bearish because you want the IWM to be below um, 181 uh, on in a couple of days. So now you have a bullish position and a bearish position. Neither need anything to happen. This one needs price not to explode. This one needs price not to collapse. And for that, you collect 25 cents or so. So you're risking 75 cents. You're going, whoa, you're risking 75 cents to make 25 cents. So that's $75 to make $25 per contract. Uh, so if you do 10, you risk 750 to make 250. But if you think about it, uh, when you buy shares or options for 750, that's the risk. You're risking 750. In theory, it can go to zero. They don't, but in theory, they can. And you're expecting a move of 25% in four days. This is what this does. This pays you 25% in four days and no move needed. In fact, you need absolutely nothing to happen and you win. So it's not as crazy as it sounds. Um, the risk reward is extremely attractive, especially that the odds of success are relatively high. Personally, I usually go higher and lower. Uh, I make the, the box wider. I want more buffer. So I'll take yeah. less money for better odds. I'd rather risk less money for better odds. So this in this case, the, huh? This is this is the iron condor that that you do that expires. This is an I, this today. is an example of an iron condor and it's called okay. an iron condor. I have no idea why, but I'll go with the flow. So I sell something, I collect money. I sell the opposing something, I collect money. So now I am a bullish and I bearish. And if it rallies, this one is losing a little bit on paper. This one is winning a little bit. If we have a red day, this one is losing a little bit. This one is winning a little bit. So I decide to close it halfway if I don't like it tomorrow. So I can do the same for one day, two days, three days, six days, a month out, three months out, a year out. It all depends on my perspective. And uh, these are neutral trades. It's like... I don't care what happens as long as you don't collapse or explode. 
that stipend. And most days these work. The trick is to not let the one day it doesn't work uh, blow you out to maximum loss. And the discussion is great. So this morning I popped into the chat room, no joke, this morning, and I had an honest discussion with somebody. Uh, um, somebody messaged me directly, private message me today, which you can do on this side here. If you don't want to talk in here, uh, we can talk in the private message. And they reached out with the pri private message and they were saying, hey, I'm paper trading. Love to hear that, by the way. I know one of you is going to ask. Let me guess. They already probably asked. Uh, how much money do I need to be able to do this stuff, right? How many of you did ask that? Put a one in the chat. How many of you asked? How? Okay, there you go. Charles was wondering, how much money do I need to do something like that? You don't need any money because you shouldn't be using real money if you're learning something new. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy that people jump in. Where are your trades? I'm ready to take them. And luckily, this person was smart enough to use paper trades. So he took a couple of trades and his wording, uh, two different separate trades, and luckily they were paper trades. He took a, an iron condor, he thought, and price went against it. And if he had taken an iron condor, he would have taken a maximum loss. Instead, he goes, my account is showing profit. I was like, well, then you didn't take an iron condor. You took something else. And I think he set up the trade incorrectly. So clearly, luckily, he used uh, paper money. So now he can hone in and see, find out what, how, what the heck happened. Uh, also, his second trade was he took a, a debit call spread in Apple, and he thought he was buying a debit call spread in Apple, which is a bullish position that requires a move in Apple. Um, well, the move came, except it turns out that he took a credit call spread in Apple. And so he had maximum loss in that versus thinking he had a maximum gains. He goes, I got assigned you know, on paper. And, uh, you know, the assignment resolved itself. So basically they booked maximum loss for him and he didn't understand why. So I told him he has some homework to do and I put in, pointed to him in the right direction, which by the way, is right here. I have uh, videos that walk you through what is the spread. But first you got to learn what's a put and what's a call. These are like 10, 12 minutes each. And what is the spread? And then you come back to me with questions. So hopefully he will come back to me with questions. Paper trading, you can write it down on paper if you want, but there are platforms out there that allow for it. Like Thinkorswim has a paper trading account. I think, it's, in fact, most major trading accounts allow you to trade with fake money. So that's what they call paper trades. Uh, but if you don't have that, yeah, you can just take it down on a piece of paper, put an Excel spreadsheet and say, I opened this trade and I collected this much and here are the two things I did uh, to open that trade. You can do that. Um, but most accounts are, and, and it doesn't usually cost anything to paper trades. So Google it, you'll probably find a bunch of them. E-Trade has one, uh, Thinker, TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim has one for sure. Uh, you know, I don't know if Works has one, but it might. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, yeah, so I'm not pushing one platform over another. You know, they all have advantages here and disadvantages there. What is the best side? I just said that, Naif. Um, you just, whatever works for you. Nick, you know, and... some people love E-Trade. I hate E-Trade. Some people love Thinkorswim. Other people hate Thinkorswim. I think Thinkorswim is pretty good because it has excellent charts. And it's uh, free. Someone, has a, someone has a couple of questions about your Sunday session. How do, how, where do the tickers come from? How does it work? Okay, so the tickers on Sunday, guess what? They come from you. So let's say you're lazy AF and you don't want to do your homework. Or you do your homework and you just want the second opinion. Like this person asking me here today, what do you think about Baba? I'm pretty sure he's done his opinion already and he just wants the second opinion. Um, so you give me the tickers you want. I have a form for that. I collect them on Friday. I spend about three hours, maybe four hours on Saturday doing the homework for you. And I'll put them in a nice stable. And then we'll get together on Sunday and I'll deliver it in person with my findings. And if you can't make it, I will record it for you so you can watch it at your leisure. And on top of that Sunday night, which I will tonight, when the futures open, which is about three o'clock my time in California, I will, uh, you know, so by late night at the most on the East Coast, you will have a 10 minute, maybe seven minute video. These days they're short because it's super, super stupid what's going on in the market. It's simple, simple explanation and what to do. Uh, we will have a um, a recap and a preview, a recap of what last week, preview of what to expect and what are the major uh, events or scheduled headlines. Um, um, do I recommend tickers I like? I write up tickers every day, Jay. So every day, like for example, middle of the week, I said, you know what? There's nothing compelling, but if you force me, I would go along this and that and this. Or if you don't want to go along 
these two companies, you can go along the QQQ, which I did. Uh, and that was one day. So you had three setups that day. If you looked at your account and you said, you know what, I'm not long any of these three, let me pick one of them. Or you know what, I'm long all three of these, I'm not going to do anything today. So yeah, I share my trade ideas. And I discuss your trade ideas. I'm telling you, we have 330 people live every day, all day. I'm not joking. 330 people live every day, all day. You think we're going to be short of ideas? No way. We have more ideas than we can handle. Let me show you some stuff that comes out of this room. This is the live room that's extra. You don't need to be there. If you can make it there, I promise you, your learning skills will go from here to here. Every day, you will learn something new. Um, so no, no free trials. If you're if you're serious at getting better, Zubair, if you're serious at getting better at trading, I'm going to guarantee you, you will become a better trader. I don't care how good you are right now. You're going to learn something new in the room. I'm learning new things every day. We do iron butterflies. We do regular butterflies, although I don't like them a lot. Um, we do uh, iron condors and um, any trade. I'll tell you what trade paid well in the last three weeks, which are called diagonals. I'll explain them in a little bit. If you want, we'll do a, lot, we'll do a quick lesson on call diagonals. They work well. They helped me in Tesla. I made money on Tesla. Uh, who made money on Tesla without being short Tesla? I was long Tesla throughout this whole drop, and I did not nail the level of entry. I entered higher than here, and I'm still making money on Tesla. Um, so I'm going to show you what other people think of the subscription, by the way. Check this out. Check this out. Hold on for a second. Um, so check this out. These are comments. Every time somebody gives me chills in the room because they give me incredible feedback, I take a picture and I say, I can't, I can't make this stuff up because this is, I have, what, how many people? Almost three, 296 people. That was January 3rd. Here's a statement. Um, after your tips from Friday and today, I can now sign up for a lifetime subscription just off those two trades. That was Jake. I promise you, I didn't pay Jake to say that. In fact, I don't know what Jake this is because I don't remember a new Jake, but this new Jake, after your tips from Friday and today, I can now sign up for a lifetime subscription just off these two trades. This is, for example, this guy here, Fast Trades, he shares at least six trades a day. And he's a kind of trader that I can't beat. Enter here, enter, uh, fast, in and out, in right. and out. And look, we have a sh shadowed, shadowed one that says, I've been a member for about seven months. And the things, <laughs> the things I've learned from Nick and this community have been invaluable. Papa's dream says I did well on Tesla. Um, Erwin, this is all, this is it. This is it. You're looking at it right now. We'll put in the link on the checkout for you. But, but yeah, this is great, Nick, because it's every day. <laughs> it's a <the> thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's a, it's a two way, it's a two way, uh, two way street here. I learned from you and I'll tell you what I learned last year from you. It was incredible. I grew so much from having you in my room. Hold on. Zubert has a question. I am, I have short spread on Tesla. Well, I need to know what is it? Calls, puts, whatever. Give me more details and I'll help you with that. All right, so uh, here's another one. This is this person. She shared her name, and I blocked it. Um, she shared her PNL and then deleted it real quickly. But she was saying that okay, her account is not massive, but she grew so much from being in the room. She's a sweetheart, and she's in the live room very often. And I tell you, um, we have dozens of dozens of people like her. And by the way, yes, we do have a lot of women, which is unusual for options trading room. This is not a right. Discord woot, woot, woot type of a room. Calm, respectful, helpful. Everybody jumps in and helps everybody else. Um, everybody shares. And if you don't want to share anything, you don't have to. You can direct message me if you're shy about talking in public. But I promise you, it is an easy environment. Right. Uh, Nick, Dan Patel says, hello, team. I am Nick's options trading member. I can say with 100% confidence, so there's no better mentor you can have to elevate your investment. He's available every weekday for almost nine to 10 hours. So Dan Patel, uh, mem member there on the YouTube chat saying hello to you, Nick. Hi, hi. Thanks for being here. You don't need to be here. <laughs> Louis F., our community in the trading room is the best. What's going on, Louis? Um, right, Nick. So it's the Sunday sessions. Also, let's not forget the 20 email trade alerts a month that, that are being sent out to, to members. So if that is on top of what you get on the chat room. That is on top of the community, on top of the guidance, mentorship, the Sunday stock analysis. Um, 
How do you do it, Nick? They're asking, how do you do it? Um, so I, I answered that to a personal friend yesterday. Uh, I said, I feed off the energy that I get. So I'm not a spring chicken, but uh, I am an active person. So um, I get energy from like feedback like this person. Austin is a fairly new person. I do remember him and he's up a lot. So let's go. And these are different dates, by the way. Look, now we're back into December. It's not like I chose a good week. Um, what is this? December 20th. That was an amazing call on the SPX today. Uh, even got so uh, good calls on on like I make notes on the charts and they trade fast, even though I may not trade it, but they capture. What is this one? Oh, this one is a bearish setup on December 14th. 67% uh, in five minutes from Sylvain. And I know I say it like that because Sylvain is French speaking, I believe. So uh, here's a day where November 30th, let's see, first day, um, Bird Dog made my membership already. Just watching the way you read charts, pretty cool. We do well on reading charts, okay? 200% uh, on that call, that was November 15th. So you see, we're going back in time. It's not like I picked a good day. All right. When on Sunday review the stocks that I requested, is it recorded? Yes, it's Sunday morning, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, and it is recorded. I didn't do one this Sunday. Like I said, I was traveling yesterday. And um, so th this, this, this year, last year, I learned a whole bunch of new things in order to keep up with you. I had new people come in with new skills. I was like, oh, I don't know these skills. I better go learn them so I don't fall behind. And I did. I stepped up my game, and now I have more tools in my toolbox. Currently, I have a Tesla put uh, for Strike 102. Any advice? So first of all, Papas, I need to, I need you to tell me if you own it or you you sold it, uh, because when you say when I say I have a Tesla put, it's usually I sold it, and I'll show you how I made money with Tesla. Right. So Travis has a quick question here, Nick. What if you work already while the markets are closed? I'm an absolute beginner, but I can't stop wanting to learn more of this. I guess what I'm asking is what can I do to improve if I only would have the night? Um, so the improvement is in the mindset. Um, if if somebody is resolved to just chasing based on emotions without setups, that's the first mistake. So if you have a, a few New Year's resolutions you want to do with regards to trading, um, you should, first of all, never take a trade without a, um, w with, w without a, a specific reason. So like if you bought calls on Friday, I think you're, you're setting yourself up for a difficult trade, even though I own calls, but I didn't chase. I was long at the bottom. So, and I booked a lot and booked a lot and booked a lot and left some runners, which are basically free money right now. Um, of course, I don't want to lose the free money, but at least I can risk money knowing for a specific purpose. So if if I can help you avoid these and get you in the habit, when you see my trades, you will never see a trade after a 6% rally, a bullish trade setup. You usually see it. Okay, I would say something like people are freaking out um, on this whatever stock falling from here to here. I think they're making a mistake because the reason they're falling on was a downgrade for JP Morgan. Who cares what JP Morgan thinks about the stock if the stock is still growing? I will take the opposite side of that bet. And here is my setup. Or I would say, you know, there's nothing going on right here. Let's settle an iron condor on Disney, which worked out. Uh, or, you know, I, I want a short caterpillar, but I don't want to be so short. So let's do an iron condor. Those are real setups, by the way. And they worked out. Or I would say, you know what, Cummings CMI is extended and I found it on a wolf wave. This is an active trade. My confidence is not as good because wolf wave I just learned this year, but I'm taking a trade very hardcore and I would stop out if it goes away. If it goes wrong, boy, did it pay. Whoo, we nailed it. Um, and uh, I did the same thing on a deer. Uh, I took flack for deer. You know, for example, I saw a deer bearish setup and I said, I'm shorting deer and I'm giving it room. I sold the credit call spread way up here. And I promise you, I didn't look at it twice and it paid out maximum gains. And when I posted it online, uh, I, I posted the chart. Someone pushed back on me so somewhat rudely saying, what are you crazy and cussed me out or something. So I'm not a member, but somebody from outside, somehow they saw the message. So some people may not agree. But I trust levels. I don't, in, I don't invest with emotions. So I'll tell you the story about Tesla. 
um, when it was falling, Tesla was falling. So this, whoever is asking advice on Tesla, I'm not going to give you advice. I'm going to give you feedback on Tesla. Okay. So how about if I tell you this? What if I told you two months ago that Tesla could be $80? For, for, let me rephrase. I'll tell you exactly what I said. Tesla could be 140 pretty quickly, and the target could be as low as $80. And somewhere in the middle, I said it will be two digits. Well, guess what? I, I didn't see the exact low in Tesla, but I bet you it was pretty close to two digits, correct? I think it was 102. Last time I checked, maybe it had gone lower than this. Um, so I'm going to show you the chart that I shared with the group weeks and weeks and weeks ago. So not the same month, but I'm fairly confident it was. So this is Tesla. And the chart I showed is this white line right there. So right where Tesla was still toying with just below 200, I said, if Tesla doesn't recover 225-ish, 215, 210, 215, 225, and stay there on a weekly basis, this is the target. This was my yellow arrow from weeks. You can go back. Um, the, the price, I believe, was like 102. Did it go to 99 or something? Did it go to two digits? Low was 101.80, but after hours, I don't know. So this setup played for Bitcoin, played for, uh, which in October of 2021, I said it's going to 22 to 19, and boy, did it. Um, I, I played it with NVIDIA, with AMD, and guess who's in it now? Apple. So if Apple doesn't get back above 134 pretty quickly, it could too, it too could go to two digits. Uh, first stop is the middle of the teens. So 115, 117, 112, 113 is possible. And the ultimate target could be in the two digits. Like, I know it's crazy. That's not my scenario, but it is a scenario that exists and I must respect it. And I know that if it doesn't go back to 134, that scenario is unfolding just like this one. So it will need a headline to get down there because people are emotional and they need headlines. But the bears have it. They're selling rallies on a weekly basis. This is a slow chart, but it developed pretty quickly. So how the hell did I make money with this? On one of these days up here, it was still in the 40s, nowhere near the low. Uh, I can't remember exactly when. Somebody said, I kid you not, listen to this. Somebody said, hey, Nick, I want to buy a $60 Tesla put for May and March. I said, I will sell you that put. That's literally what I said. And I went out and sold puts at those levels like he wanted on that day because Tesla was capitulating down. What's up, Javier? Uh, so um, no joke. This is a mirror image. This is a paper trading account, but I did it in my real account. So this is a May put at 60 and this is a March put at 60. He wanted to buy a $60 put for March, May. I told him I would buy it for March. Um, and so I sold them both in theory, right? But I really sold them my account. So I collected $335 here if I did one. And now I'm up $100 on $335. Big win. This one, I collected $200 and I'm up about $90 on $200. Big win. Tesla fell more since I opened this trade and I still made money. Why? Because when I sold them, the VIX was spiking and the Tesla puts were hot, hot, hot because everybody was panic buying puts in Tesla. And Tesla went way below since then. But it, it's it, now that like the VIX had dropped and the market was rallying and it was specific to Tesla drops. And these, these trades are still uh, profitable. Now, I don't own all of these shares. These shares that you see here, including this position, was because three weeks ago, uh, a member said, uh, she reached out to me and she said, I have these shares. I want to sell covered calls. So I bought paper account uh, shares like hers. And I did a video on how to, uh, for her, on how to, how I would sell covered calls on these. And that's why you see these shares there. But this position here, these two were on that one question, I I think it was two weeks ago, whenever Tesla fell into the 40s and maybe 30s, and he wanted to buy puts after the fact. I was like, mm, I think you're late. Uh, you know, Tesla has more downside, but buying puts is not going to get you money. What would be the margin on those naked puts? Not a lot. It would be less than buying shares right now. Can anybody tell me why? Because I'm selling a put at 60, right? If you buy shares in Tesla whenever I did them, you will pay double for the shares. So right. uh, Kevin, Kevin Lin, 
from the group says, I was in that Tesla diagonal with Nick. It was money. I've been in the group for about two months. So there's a ton of members here today. Yeah. So the Tesla diagonal, I closed the day before the, the dip down to whatever. I said, okay, I know I'm not going to nail the top in this rally, but I made so much money so quickly that I'm going to get out. And I said, I'm out. And the next day or two, it fell back down. So I can re-engage in that same position. But these are different positions of it. I appreciate you chiming in on that uh, diagonal. I was saving it for later. So thanks for ruining it, dude. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for mentioning it because I wasn't going to mention that diagonal. I was going to mention the IWM diagonals. Um, so the margin is not a lot because listen to this, um, Fadi. By the way, I have a dear friend named Fadi. Are you Lebanese? Shami? So I am too, if you are. So the the I yep, there we go. Ahlan Malim. So the margin required is not a lot because um if I'm selling a sixty dollar, let's go through this. Let's go through it. Let me show you something. So this is a lesson. So pull out your pieces of paper. This is a mini lesson on options and what it means. Um, okay, so this is the put. That's my position right there. It is $100. So basically, if Tesla falls through 60 in the next 68 days, I may, the risk I'm, I'm, I have here is that I may be forced to buy 100 shares of Tesla per contract at 60. Remember, I collected $200 for it per, con per contract. So uh, my break-even price is 58. So if they give me the shares at 60 and I sell those shares the day I get assigned at 59, I still made a dollar per share. Uh, if, they, if I sell them at 55, I only lost three dollars per share all the losses that my put position may have incurred on paper if i don't close the position disappear i wake up i have 100 shares i paid 60 so there's a lot there are a lot of accounts where they can afford to buy a 60 dollar stock if they get assigned so that's why i was comfortable saying i am selling those puts naked i don't like selling naked puts especially on a stock that's catastrophically capitulating but I feel comfortable enough to own it for a little bit at 60 and break even at 58 in case the holy schmutz moment happens. Uh, so this is uh, the other vari uh, variance of it. I told you I sold two, one at 30, 131 days. And I, I bought uh, here, I collected more than $300 for it. So my break even is 57. So if Tesla falls way below here, let's see if they can mark it up. Um, if Tesla falls way below here, then I break even at 57. So if I'm able to sell it at 57, I lost nothing. At 55, I lost $2. At 50, I lost, you, know, you get the point, right? So what if Tesla rallies? I don't make any more money. I don't get shares. I collected 350 bucks out of thin air. That's it. That's my, my level of trading. I love that kind of trading. Um, if I have money, I put my money to work and I don't need anything to, to happen. So I don't sell naked puts willy-nilly. Okay, so I'm very good at entry points at avoiding the easy mistakes. If I can give you anything is I can help you avoid the easy mistakes. So if somebody said, I'm going along Tesla here, I would have said, oh, you should stop out at X loss because the scenario in Tesla negatively, if it doesn't recover, that level is way, 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 way lower. And they didn't believe me. Very sharp people in my room, very sharp traders. They, they are invested in Tesla. And one of them kept saying, I'm adding. It was like 150 something. I was like, I wouldn't because what do you know now that you know, no, this is for the long run, I'm adding. I said, it could be 140 in no time. And then it was in the 140 and then lower than 140. Um, um, the team inside the group, I call it a team because if you have a question and I'm like doing something and I don't answer your question, somebody will jump in and try to answer the question. Because some people have been here for years and they wouldn't be here for years. Um, so anyway, so how to trade this environment? That was like the headline to get you in this room. What we've done that worked very well are the active trades inside the day, but not many people can do that. So what else can we do? Uh, I went long the QQQs before this little rally. So that is a bookable thing. I went long the IWM before this rally, and that was a bookable thing. So how did I go long the IWM? It was a very simple trade. And it wasn't specific to time frame, 
Um, it was, uh, let me see here. It might still be here. Okay. So a credit put spread January 6th. I collected uh, 50 cents. So if I did 10, I collected $500 and I needed the IWM not to collapse. I did not need a rally. I just needed it not to collapse. That trade played out. In addition, I said you can uh, somebody could also buy a call or a call spread or shares to participate in the upside. And if they did that, they too made money. Um, so um, they uh, they made money. So I had a variation that I shared in the live room right. um, by doing credit call, uh, I mean, sorry, debit call diagonals. And I explained it in the room and it worked out beautifully. So if we have time here, I can go through it quickly just to give you an idea of what it is and why it works well and why yeah, whenever, I may need to use it again. Whenever you're done with that, Nick, let me know. We have a, a, a You lot go of ahead. Go ahead right now. I have an email to answer right now anyway. Okay, cool, cool. So um, guys, thanks a lot for sending in these questions here uh, in relation to the Nick stuff. I just piled up the most common ones that I saw there. So uh, let's see. Does Nick Shaheen go over student trade ideas? Yes. This happens every single day. It's very common throughout the day. You get feedback. You, you can work strategies with Nick. If, if, for example, you're trying to work a specific trading system, you can always do that with Nick. You can private message him. Are the sessions on Sundays recorded? Yes, they are. They're recorded and they're posted in the live room. So you will always have access to them. It's about 150 stock review. Very, very good for people that want to get a head start on the week, <clears throat> right before Sunday, before uh, the Monday trading day. Um, let's see. Next question. What what are the schedules? So the blue chat room, I don't know if Nick can show it there, but basically the blue chat room is um, open 24 seven. That does not close. We have a global community. I've signed up people all the way from Zimbabwe to Canada to Finland, Australia, all over the world. OK, so that blue chat room is open 24 seven. Oh, that's Nuno in the chat. What's up, Nuno? Oh, he got the lifetime. So then. You have um, you have the live session. The live session is open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. or a little bit longer. Nick is there the entire day, sharing his screen, going through technicals, answering questions, live call outs, trading feedback, management, ongoing mentorship guidance. It's all there. I mean, I could give you a, a 100 bullet point uh, essay really on all the stuff he can do there for you. So good question there. That's the schedule. Um, Let's see, is this for one trading style or different? So Nick will help people that day trade, people that like to do spread, people that are swing trading options, people that have a full-time job or part-time job and are trading part-time. It doesn't matter what schedule you're around. We have people from every different schedule you can imagine of, and they are able to benefit from the chat room and the support from the Nick uh, live session. <clears throat> Let's see, next question. Does Nick provide education? Yes. He provides education. He's got these great videos that are basically called Nick Shaheen's private library, where he has mm. everything you need to getting started, right? What's a call? What's a put? What's a credit put spread? What's an iron condor? When to book a, a stop loss? When to take profits? These are things you need to know, things that you do need to know for risk management and for all these other things that you need to be a complete trader. Let's see. Next question. Do you teach strategies from A to Z for total beginners? Yes. How much capital is required um, to do the trades in the chat room, Nick? I think you already answered that one, right? But uh, I did. I did. I said nothing. You need nothing. Right. Um, so so and, and there's people here, Nick, that maybe have a full time job and they just don't kind. They just kind of can't see themselves. Maybe how this can benefit. But even in this live room right now that we're at, we have people that are in the chat room that are trading full time. <clears throat> but to kind of wrap this up. Basically, Nick service, it, um, you get 20 email trade alerts a month, 20 email trade alerts a month. You can sign up for text message, uh, text message alerts if you want. Uh, you, it's free for you. Then you would get about five to 10 daily trade alerts in the live room. That's separate from what you're getting by email. On Sunday, you get 150 to 200 stock analysis reviews uh, on Sundays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. And anybody that does join while we're live actually will get some bonus alerts from Nick. So I think that, yeah, it's only annual lifetime there. We'll post the link in the chat. Nick, do you have anything else to, to uh, maybe something I missed here uh, before we carry on here? 
No, but I would like to stress, uh, is there any teaching going on? How many teaching moments have we had here today? We have nine hours a day. I promise you they'll be teaching every day. It's not an official class open. Like Nuno is is uh, going nuts trying. To, like I cannot say, I, okay, he, they, Nuno wants to learn the magic of how I can call the close. First of all, I call it for you. So don't bother if you can't figure it out. I cannot put it in different words to where, <laughs> I mean, he has to do some homework himself. And it seems like he's not able to get there. Like, for example, uh, I said, so in case you don't know, there's something out there that's another teaching moment uh, is in case you don't know that that's another uh, there, there's a system out there that's called max pain, maximum pain theory, which, by the way, is totally true, but it's totally bad to use. Uh, it's incomplete, in my opinion. That's my opinion. If you use it and it works for you, that's awesome. So the the maximum pain theory is a little bit rude. It basically says the market is out there to screw everybody as much as possible. So what it wants to do when the bell rings on options expiration day, where can I place the price? That's the market talking in order to screw all the buyers, as many buyers as I can, puts, calls. So that is how you can. Um, OK, it's not for you, Zubair. Not a smart choice. Exit. So the idea is to find a price place where price is likely to rest. And if you can take bets based on that, um, then it's all good. So you, via options, you can make money off of that. You can sell credit spreads or you know not to chase the wrong uh, point. Or the, um, so when we have a, we call it a lottery ticket, it's not really a lottery ticket. Uh, let's say on an expiration day, on a Friday, Wednesday, Tuesday, because now SPX expires every day, moneymaker. Um, if you if price is here and you think it's going to close here, you can take a cheap call. And before you know it, price runs into it and that cheap call delivers big wins. But it's not available every day. We need that discrepancy. A lot of days it's available. Or if you see price here and you read the options chain and you decide that, okay, they should be lower, then you buy a put, they come down to it. Uh, so this way, you don't even need to know spreads or anything. You take a position that uh, could play out within minutes, but you need that information. So what Nuno is trying to get, how do I get this number? I shared as much information as I can. That's all there is to it. And uh, from there, like, you know, I gave you words. I said uh, the, the, the maximum pain theory includes only open interest. If you know anything about options, the open interest is a static number. So there's another teaching moment. Pay attention. What is open interest? Is this column right there? Let me zoom in. Let me see. Can I zoom in? Yes. Okay. You see here it says open interest. So this is the information from Friday. On Friday, when the market opened, this number was exactly the same as it is, 3,100, 7,800, 36, 2,700. This was the volume. This is what happened on Friday. So when the bell rings on Monday, this will be zeros and start ticking. And this will be new based on what happened here. Okay, so this number will change based on these 16 transactions. Doesn't mean there'll be plus 16. These transactions could be buys and sells of the same thing. Could be the same call, bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold. And so we don't know what ends up the number here. We can guess, but it's only a guess. So based on this information during the day, on expiration day, I can make a, an educated guess based on years of looking at numbers and based on years of looking at um, options chain. So, and um, this person is looking to get that in one shot. And I don't know how, how else to say it and nicely to say it. So I said my my answer to the maximum pain before I send you to go look into it, because it's super important, is you need to learn the concept of the maximum pain, what it is. And I just told you what it is. So if you just understood what I said, that's the concept of maximum pain. Price wants to be at a place that punishes most buyers of calls and puts. If you can find a spot on expiration day, where most calls and puts die for maximum loss for the buyers, that's where price is going to be. It's almost a guarantee. But I said, I need to pay attention to the um, volume. Um, so the, the volume is what I need to pay attention, which is this one. 
So it's all good that this is what the morning started with. But by the time midday goes around, these number is much bigger than these on expiration day. This is not expiration day. Trust me, that's what it works out. Anyway, the learning is all over the place, but there needs to be some patience. And I promise you this question came up from this person like 15, 16 times in three days. And I'm not exaggerating. And I'm patient. Somebody else is trying to explain it with their words. Somebody else is trying to explain it with their words. Um, you know, the lessons are there all day. And uh, um, we don't have anybody antagonizing anybody else. There's friendly competition in the in the live room, but it's just friendly competition. And I promise you, it's a lot of fun. I even have a cowbell in here. So when I slip a cuss word here and there, I uh, I throw a coin into a coffee cup, but I'm drinking less coffee now and no energy drinks. So it's all good. Uh, can I get uh, more of my credit spread alerts without having to follow the live chat? I currently get the 20 emails a month. Uh, I don't like to give credit credit spread alerts that are delivered to people that are not in the live because th those ones that I send out that are not in the live, that I share in the live room, are time sensitive for the same day. So I'm not going to send them out. It's irresponsible. If you want to pop in and see them in the morning and it's on to you, if you want to not pay attention to for the rest of the day, then that's on you. But I'm not going to be responsible for that. You may be smart enough for that, um, but I cannot trust it. It's not good behavior. Right. Um, Nick, uh, how about this? How about you reach out to me and you tell me, give me a credit spread on this ticker. I will give you one for you. And may share it with the rest. Nick, and there's a couple of uh, questions here. How would I be able to take advantage of this if um, if I'm a new trader? And a, the next one is if I have a full-time job. Maybe you can explain that a little deeper. Sure. John is asking about XSP. I love the XSP. Yes, I trade personally the XSP. I, I closed my longs in the XSP on this rally. Um, so the if so, I trade every day but I'm not a day trader. So uh, the idea is to find the trades that suit your style, your personality, your risk tolerance, and your time frame. Okay, so I know my time frame. I'm super busy during the day. I don't, I rarely try to take trades that go from point A to point B real quickly because I know I'll mess it up. So I personally prefer trades that need three weeks that have three weeks on the clock and a couple of questions scrolled off. I think they were along the same lines of questioning, like what's an average trade hold. I said, I will tell you that if it was my style, it will either be same day expiration SPX or XSP or SPY, if you like, or like three week bet on a stock that's falling out of control and, or that a stock that has good solid support. And I just want to make money off of that or that a stock of a stock that's stalled. And I want to sell an iron condor on that. That would be my best. Or if a, st a stock going into heavy, heavy resistance, and I would like to short it via a credit call spread, which has limited risk. Three weeks-ish. Do I hold it through to the end? I try not to. Um, there are studies out there that tell you if you close early, let's say 50% of maximum gains, uh, you will end up in the long run making more money per day. Now, I don't know the exact math. I know the spirit of that works because if you close wins early, they can't take a win from you. Uh, and uh, But it needs a certain personality. Some people hate leaving money on the table. I hate losing more than leaving money on the table. So I have no problems closing early and then seeing something go exactly how planned had I not closed it. I was like, oh, I didn't need to close it. I could have stayed more for more money. Who cares? I just made money. Let me give you a piece of advice on emotions. I'm not a psychologist, but in trading, you have wins and losses. When you lose, you're upset. When you win and you're upset, when are you not upset? You won't last. So take your wins, regardless how not perfect they are, as a win with a smile, even if you missed out on a bazillion dollars. A win is a win. A loss is a loss. If you want to emotionally stay engaged in this game, you can't beat yourself up over a win because it could have been better. Nope. A win is a win. Can I reduce a put or a call? Chris, I don't understand the question. Okay, Fatty, great. Listen, man, I'm telling you, you belong in the room. The questions you're telling me here, another person scrolled off the page as well with the same tip. Javier, I think you are, if you're not there already. 
Um, so <laughs> the open interest can help, but I don't know. No, all by itself, no. For me, if you tell me I cannot use anything, I will use levels on the chart. See all these lines? They're uh, hand drawn. So I put these lines there. So if you look at my chart, I ha have hardly any um, indicators. So I have the harmonics indicator because I don't know how to draw harmonics on the fly. And it's a big moneymaker intraday or longer term if you know how to use it. Um, so if, if I were to use the best tell of support and resistance, let's go there, actually. Um, it's look left on the chart. So here are my lines. I de develop my intuition on support and resistance zones, and it's incredibly accurate uh, just because I look left and I don't employ emotions. For example, look at this red arrow. That red arrow was, I started it here. I said I would buy the dip into this buyer's box if it comes or chase the rip above this level. And I said, most likely the scenario will be dip, come back, break out and get to here. So meanwhile, that's what happened. They dipped a little bit more than my uh, drawn line, but inside the box, they bounced off of support level, support levels. And then they took out the breakout line and they stalled where I think they were going to stall. And they went to my target and overshot a little bit. So if you had forced me on Friday what to do, I would have bought puts to take advantage from here to here. And I would get out because there are buyers in here somewhere around 385. It was a big level on the way up. And I think it will, it should play some level on the way down. So here's hey, a scenario. Uh, really quick here. Just want to give a shout out here to Jesse Lane. Welcome to the family here. Newest chat room member. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, so... Uh, this is a scenario. Let's say we, we open down Monday just because we had so much up days and then we bounce and we don't take this out. If we take this out, the target becomes here. Um, if we don't take this out by, say, Tuesday, we may fade back and lose the level from which we bounce on Monday. You following the logic? But you notice that I didn't say that's happening. I said that is one scenario, but I know the alternative scenario is this. So now I'm ready to know where to stop out. For example, if I bought puts, and we get to here on Monday, I close the puts because I bought puts on the fact that, okay, we topped on Monday for a little bit and I'm looking to buy the dip somewhere around here. Yep. So bearish from here to here, if it gets to anywhere here, I would get long somehow. And um, maybe they do a trend like this and then they find footing and then we come back to here and then we break out. Uh, believe it or not, from for the last three or months, maybe four months, when everybody's freaking the fudge out, um, not many quote experts are telling you we could make an all time high in the market. I'm one that said it's just as likely to make an all time high as to be at 3000 SPX. Not a lot of people. I use wrinkle charts, I don't, but I use a whole bunch of other charts. I use, um, you know what, if somebody wants to learn technical analysis in its entirety, but studying one, one technical study, um, Ichimoku is the one. So, <laughs> because it has all elements wrapped up in one. So if you want to spend some time studying Ichimoku, it's worth it, but you got to do your own homework. I haven't seen one expert that does it well. I've seen many, many, many different YouTube videos and you take one piece of each of them if you're smart enough to do that. Um, so what were, what were we? Okay, check this out. Look, I don't know why this is doing that. So DIA, that is the ETF on the Dow. Okay. What was shocking is that this is a weekly chart on the Dow, what they used to call the market. At on, on uh, when was that? December 12th week, that one big spike. Look how close the market was to an all-time high. That was under 5%. From an all-time high. What? Yep. Imagine what happens if we take this out. Which is which is why I think it's too soon to expect an all-time high. But this is a one week chart. So every candle is a full week. So this was last week. Imagine in the next two, three weeks, we take this out. You don't think we take this out? I guarantee you we take that out. This is an inverse head and shoulders that could have $30 in it 
it's actually more, but I'm giving you my estimate. So it could be as much as, so actually 40 bucks, but let's go with $30. So 380 is totally doable. So 380, 390 is totally doable which on the DIA, which is the uh, ETF that tracks the Dow, uh, would be at an all-time high. I'm just saying, people are not looking, they, they're too emotional. Why? Because people, uh, they, they are totally involved in the following the news. And if you follow the news, what is everybody expecting? Tell me, give me one word. What is everybody, what is the news telling you? Recession, right? Hassan, Ahlan Mani recession therefore markets should crash so wall street has gone stupid it, it's like when we went to covid lockdown the uh, the grown-ups in wall street never went back to work they said screw it i'm retired and they left it in the hands of inexperienced people and i i'm here to remind you of of, of shit they used to sell us in the past from wall street um like uh, for example um the market prices in things six months in advance. We've been talking of freaking recession for more than six months. You don't think the market priced it in already in the drop? Why do you think? Um, why do you think they have been falling? <laughs> That's a good one, Mark. Uh, they have been falling for a, almost a year. Stocks because everybody's expecting a recession and they're pricing it in. I'm going to tell you something. I just flew across the country. I shopped here in California before I flew, and I shopped across the country in uh, at the other end of the country. Okay, the airport was packed here in California. Lines out the door. The planes are packed. I went to the Apple store here in California. I bought something at the Apple store. Not for me. Don't freak out. I still don't buy Apple stuff for me. Um, there were 160 people in the Apple store, about 35 employees of those 160. And it was just a normal day. The mall where the Apple store was, was packed. I couldn't find parking. I drove for 20 minutes. The malls on the East Coast are packed. I couldn't find parking. Um, the stores were packed. It's like it's still Christmas. And where is the freaking recession they're talking about? Okay. So how is it that people say we're expecting a recession? And which, by the way, technically, they cannot announce one for another six months. What? Because you technically, what people are saying, which is not true, that the whenever you get two negative quarterly GDP, so that's six months of reports, two negative consecutive quarterly GDPs is when they announce a recession. First of all, that rule is out the window. It's one of the parameters, and they don't have to say it. There's a bureau of whatever, whatever that um, that decides on that. So we just had a positive quarterly GDP. So the clock ticks again, two consecutive. So that's six months of no talks of an official recession announcement. So, and if we get another update on the quarterly GDP and it's positive, so that's another month out in my opinion. So the recession talks are phobia. It's just, they're talking out of there, you know what? There's no tangible reason to announce a recession, especially when the, the Fed is still worried about a hot economy. How can you have a recession when we have too much spending and too much money and full freaking employment? You see what we have? We have something new. We have something where we're getting recessionary reports because the data is rolling over super strong comps from fake money during exit of the pandemic. And we have excessive spending everywhere else. We have an excess of excess of money. So I made up a word accession more cowbells yes indeed <laughs> I, I dropped a couple of bombs in there so don't get wrapped up we have a recession therefore stocks are going to fall the stock market took a recession and an, and a correction above it why because it fell 25 28 percent uh, the spy fell 28 percent the dow fell 21 percent uh, let me see what the qqq fell which is the nasdaq from top to bottom uh, fell 37%. That's almost two recessions. A recession on Wall Street is a 20% drop. A correction on Wall Street is a 10% drop. The recession in the economy is different than those two. But if the economy was expecting a recession, Wall Street said, screw it, we're taking our recession right here, right now. So don't you think some of that has already priced in a 
this ghost recession that they will never announce, I would be I would dance on camera if they announce a recession. If the White House announces a recession, I would dance on camera for you. Come back and we'll have a session. We'll have fun with it. Right. A so, CPI report is bullshit. What is the CPI going to tell you? There is no inflation. No, this is going to tell you that we still have some inflation. It's probably not going to be worse. It's significantly worse than before. So inflation peaked unless they do another QE. And I have to tell you something. This is the funniest thing on the planet. My son is starting his work career. He doesn't make a lot of money. He files his own taxes, right? Guess what he got in the last, I don't know, three weeks? This is a government that is actively destroying its economy by raising rates at a record pace. Never before have they raised this path. This is a government that's actively destroying its economy to fight inflation. And you know what my son got? He got a little card that says uh, free money from the government to help with the inflation. So they give free money, which is what causes inflation. And uh, my son spent it the same day. So I, I, what is happening here? So here's what you do. You just shut down all the news and trade what's in front of you. What's in front of me? Data points. So we'll go to Apple. I, I told you Apple is in, in trouble, deep trouble. Apple needs to recover. Look at this arrow in Apple. The, I, I did this, uh, tr trust me, um, before, and it, it, you know, it, it played out. But now the problem is it's playing out something else that has more downside to go. It could go. Apple is a fantastic company. I promise you, I'm, I don't hate Apple. I just don't buy their products because they're not for me. But financially, it is the biggest company on the planet as far as uh, market cap. I believe it still is. But it is in trouble technically. Um, and it's losing a battle like Tesla did. So then the bears on a weekly basis will become very, very brave to short the hell out of it. So you can almost see it, some sort of a head and shoulders this way, right? Or this way, whichever you, you draw it. Somewhere around 134, 135 lies a trigger point for a downside scenario that puts it here. And if you're freaking out, I want to remind you that this is a level that was an all-time high before the pandemic. We broke out of, into an all-time high out of nowhere, and then we crashed into a pandemic, and then we recovered it. This was when everything was hunky-dory right here. And then the pandemic hit, and then we did this. Apple's still here. This is like 45% still. So it can fall 45% still, and still be at or above the all-time high from before the pandemic when the world was perfect okay and now the world is not perfect we have chain supply supply chain issues blah 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 recessions coming and whatever um, um anyway you you catch my drift so technically if apple doesn't do this and and then take this out and snap out of this descending channel that's building here apple will will come down like tesla a little bit at a time until it hits the target of this head and shoulders, which is about here. Um, and I'm not saying that's where Apple is going. So don't go buy puts in Apple saying that's what's happening. <laughs> don't short Apple. If you short Apple, you're shorting the market. Okay. So this is a technical scenario that says Apple is in the hands of the sellers. And uh, this doesn't change until the buyers break out of this descending channel. And it's a process. It's not like a one-day event. I will track it for us. And if you're part of the team, I will share it with you too. Um, now, here's a difference. You see this relativity here? You see this? How Apple is so high relative to that part pre-pandemic? Pre Look at Amazon. I bought Amazon shares. I'm green. Uh, I, I sold Amazon puts. I'm green. Why? Because Amazon is below the pandemic level. When the world was closed and we had a virus supposedly was killing everybody and at least we didn't know much about it so it was a mystery so that's scary and now the stock is down there they multiplied their uh, their bottom line 10 times 10 times in like five six years that's just insanity and they're down here they're at levels that are the crash levels from 2018 in 2018 the markets crashed from powell and then he started raising rates i mean cutting rates uh so this doesn't make sense 
if the market's higher in the future, Amazon can explode higher. It would definitely be higher. So as an investment, if I'm looking to own 100 shares of Amazon, I would have bought 50 of them on this dip, knowing full well that I may not nail the bottom, but I'm pretty close. Now, if the markets crash, Amazon will have some more downside to go, but it won't have as much speed as this one. This one has a lot more speed to go. Do I typically use one week chart to evaluate present value? No, Kyle. I, I, I start somewhere. So if I don't know the stock, uh, I usually start on the daily to get some idea. In this case, um, good question. So follow this logic. If you want to learn these skills on your own, so somebody says, look at Apple. And let's say I've never seen Apple. I'll open up the daily chart. And that gives me about a year's worth of data. And I'll see that I need more time frames to evaluate the stock because it is lower than, you know, I don't have, I don't know what came below here. So I would want to see more data. So then I will switch to one week. Now I have five years worth of data and I will get a more complete look. And now I can start my, uh, so my analysis if i wanted to enter then i will go to shorter time frame to get more short-term data that's a two-hour chart and then i'll go to the one-hour chart and a 30-minute chart okay so now i have active uh and i have information i can act on for example i expect a dip down to here and a recovery and then then take it out uh, so it is a process it's hard to learn all in one time but um, I promise you, there's a lot to be said. Right, and look, we have we've had about so, so we have. You're, you're telling me we have uh, a ton of people li watching live. We have so, like 600 people live right now watching. All right, so how about we give you a, um, a a one thing that you should write down to do this year that maybe you didn't do last year for trading. I don't care how you trade. Um, write this down. It's very simple. I use an acronym for fun, but the concept is very simple. And the acronym is NTNT. If you've heard me before or if you're part of my team, you know this acronym. Uh, so I, I, I say NTNT, which is no trigger, no trade, no thesis, no trade, which is what? This is the one thing you should do this year, all year, and never not do again. So whenever you take a position, if you do not have a trigger, or a very specific reason, thesis, then why are you taking the trade? So the T is a thesis or a trigger. So if you don't do charts, join the group. I'll do the charts for you. But if you don't do charts, you can use a thesis. For example, you're saying, I'm going long Amazon because it has never been cheaper on a price to sales basis. That is a thesis, okay? So then when your thesis is um, uh, negated, how it can be negated? Price to sales is sensitive to the price of the stock and the sales. So if the sales fall apart, then it becomes expensive. Like if Amazon comes out and says, we're down 30% on our sales, whew, that would change my mind on Amazon real quick and the economy. So that would be your thesis. So then you know what, you know what, my thesis was broken. I need to back out of this trade. So if you don't have a specific reason to be in that trade, why are you in it? So when I get somebody that says, um, I have, can you help me with this? Somebody asked about Tesla put. When you help me um, help me with the put on Tesla, and I'll say, what's your position? I will ask first, why did you take the position? Not because I'm nitpicking them, because I want to know if that reason is still there. Well, if they said it was for the earnings, and then the earnings are coming gone, it's like, why are you still in it? We don't need to debate it anymore. You need to be out of that trade. So that would be step one. So if you want to do one thing different, to succeed better in trading and not be, not be a retail guessing game for you is uh, there there isn't a pro at doing uh, options or investment trading or whatever that uh, does uh, things based on emotions and nothing but it's weird you need a system and the system should always have number one reason why am i taking the trade okay so let's get that to do there is a bunch of them that you need, to, but we, we don't have time to address all of them. Very interested in the Tesla diagonal. Okay, Tom, we can do that. John, uh, can I talk about the diagonal? Two diagonal questions. Um, Amazon's doing great because people realize, okay. Okay, <laughs> Lawrence, you missed the holes. Um, 
Okay, Amazon is doing great because the bottom line is doing great. <laughs> and because they have excellent leadership and because they own the cloud, they have, they are, they still put it as retail, whereas it freaking owns the cloud. Okay, they built the cloud for the world and everybody's playing catch up and they're still huge and growing very fast, less than before, but they're going very fast. I'm not worried about Amazon. Um, so the question that I got from a couple of people, and I think one above, diagonals. How about we go there? Okay, pens and papers, everyone. Uh, whether Tesla or not, Tesla doesn't matter. So let's use Tesla, diagonal. Okay, how can I use a diagonal? I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Uh, first of all, a diagonal, um, let's back into it. So let's say I want to buy a February uh, trade on Tesla. And what is it now? 113. Okay, so this is the current price on Tesla. Let's go in. This is an options chain. If you don't know much about options, this is an options chain. Uh, in this case, uh, Tesla is this company. And I chose 40 days. Uh, the contract is February 17th expiration. I chose that randomly. Uh, it has 40 days on the clock. So if you don't know anything about options, this side here, these are the calls. This side here, these are the puts. What are they? It doesn't really matter. If you don't know what those are, it's hard to get you up to speed on everything. So um, I can buy 100 shares in Tesla and I would be long Tesla. Or I can buy a call in Tesla um, at 120 and pay $900 for it. Well, how do I know that? 120. So if I buy a call, that affords me the right, but not the obligation to buy 100 shares. If I do that, now I'm locked in for a price of 120 on 100 shares. So I can buy 100 shares and spend 100 times $113. It's a lot of money. Or I can only spend $900. So I'm risking $900. So the give back on that is that time sensitive. I, you know, that 900 is in danger. It could all disappear pretty quickly unless I get a, a move pretty quickly. So in this case, I have 40 days. Okay, that's one way to trade Tesla. Another way to trade Tesla is to um, buy this. Actually, ideally, what would happen is, let's say Tesla rallies $30, $40. Um, you know, you're locked in at 120. You can exercise your right, call your broker. Hey, buy me those shares. I paid $900 for that. Then they'll buy you those shares. And then you're long Tesla at 120, regardless of how high Tesla goes. Now, I like to do is if, if I get this move quickly, then that $900 turns into $1,300, $1,600, $2,000, depends on how Tesla flies. And if it flies too much, uh, I just sell the call for a premium. So I would have made hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands, without needing to buy shares. So the other way of doing that is buying a call spread. So I buy this, pay 900, and I sell this, collect 400. So now I own an asset. I buy this, and I sell that. So I pay 900, I collect 400, I'm rounding for easy math. So the whole cost here is $500. And um, the only thing here is I limited my maximum profits. So I can take that 500 and make it uh, two grand. I locked myself at a maximum of two grand, which is not too shabby, right? Even if I double my money, hello, double my money. So that is a debit call spread. I got you there, and now we're going to change that spread to make it look like something else. So the visual on that spread, visual on that spread is like this. Buy one and then sell one, and I randomly chose this one. You see that $500? Okay. This is a debit call spread. They also call them vertical spreads. Why? Because they're vertical inside one time frame. We're going to put a twist on that. Uh, somebody said, I'm interested in a diagonal. Okay. So this is Tesla um, five days on the clock. I just clicked on that to show you. This is the one we were looking at. And I added another one above it. In fact, let's reduce that to, do we have 12? Will that be good? Perfect. Okay. Actually, not perfect. 115. Bear with me. It's worth it. Perfect. Okay. So this is the spread we worked on. What if I do this? Take this one, buy this. Instead of buying this and making a vertical spread, selling this and making a vertical spread, I sell this. The same option uh, that only has five days on the clock. Okay. 120 call. 
120 call I bought, instead of selling the 140, I would sell the 120 call, but shorter time frame. So in this case, I still spend the 900, but I don't collect 400. I only collect 200. Why? Because it only has five days on the clock. So this is uh, the entry cost is a little bit more, but this one is called a calendar. Why? Because I'm jumping calendars. I'm buying one out in time. I'm selling one shorter in time, same level. This is called a calendar. Calendar spread, call spread in this case. I need to do this one. So what if I modify this one? So what's the downside of this? First of all, you pay more money. The downside also, if you get a big spike in Tesla that goes to 140 right away, you kind of screw it. Uh, you screw yourself with that one. Why? Because you uh, are long and short at the same place, 120 and 120, and you paid to be there. So managing out of it will be a mess and you could lose some money. Now, to make that management better, you would, instead of selling the 120, you would sell, say, the 122. In this case, you would collect even less money, not 200, you collect 170. Uh, so the entry price is in this um, a little bit more, but uh, it's easier to manage, much easier to manage if Apple, um, I mean, Tesla spikes big time. So let me put it on a chart to show you where, um, where's Tesla right here? Uh, to show you how they look on a chart, a diagonal and not a diagonal. Let's go to 120. Okay. So this is Tesla right now, and I'm going to mark it up, draw. So February 17th, let's discuss it. Let's say it's this one. I said I would buy a call, correct? February 17th. And that was 900 bucks. I'm showing you what I just showed you on the chart. So I could sell the 140 call here. So I buy this one, I sell that one. This is a debit call spread, vertical, inside the same time frame. That's a vertical spread. Now, instead of selling this one, I buy this one, but instead of doing that, I sell the 120 that expires this week. So I buy this, I sell that. I pay 900, I collect 200. Remember those numbers? This is a calendar, a jump calendars, same level. Let's say I don't do that. I buy this, and instead of doing that, I sell the 122. Now it becomes a diagonal because it's literally diagonal. Uh, I, sell, I buy this, I sell that. So that is, this is what I did. I bought a call in Tesla. Tesla rallied. I sold a call in Tesla, and then it continued rallying. But it was slow enough to where the one I sold died or was dying. So I closed the whole thing for a, a double, I think. It was a big win. And uh, just a few hours later, it, it reverted lower. I didn't time it perfectly, but it was a good win. So I wasn't worried whether it was going to rally without me or not. I was okay making money off of a trade and the setup. But what I just did here, I gave you a full lesson, which I do every day on the fly, about what is a vertical, what is a calendar, and what is a diagonal. Okay. All right. So we have like hundreds of people. Let's do some charts. Give me a ticker. You're welcome, Chris. I'm telling you, this is what happens every day. Every day. CrowdStrike. I don't like it. Rivian. I, I bought shares for the long term, Joseph. Uh, Google. We can do Google. AMD and Penn West. JP Morgan. No. Penn. Okay. I know Palo Alto had some issues or somebody downgraded something, right? They took a bath. I wasn't in the office on Friday, so. Okay, so this is where I don't know the stock fundamentally. I know I'm not a fan of cybersecurity because no everybody's going to get hacked. So here's uh, Palo Alto Networks. Uh, they're losing important levels, but they're falling into important zones. So they're kind of, they have support, but it's very wide. So... This candle is very representative of how strong the buyers are into 123. So I, if, if, if I'm short, maybe I can play it short until the, like below 130. But if I'm short, this is where I would be booking my profits. But I tell you one thing, a rally into 150, 155, 158 will be met by sellers. So if I get long here, I would exit on a rally. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Google was another one, I believe. I'm going to do Google L because it trades a little bit better. Uh, I would be long Google. In fact, I believe I shared a long Google trade. 
I don't remember what it was, but it probably was a credit put spread with a version of a debit call spread. I would have also bought some shares if I was one to buy shares. Um, it, Google could be 110 in the next two months if the markets don't correct. Um, the, this is a harmonic. I would feel better about it. In fact, I'm going to do it right now at Google Alert. Harmonic. Uh, Google. Arm one week. Progress. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm tracking the relative strength of the stock to itself to see if this green pattern will deliver 110 as a target. Shorter term on Google. Great company. Um, it has sellers between 88 and a half and 89 and a half. And uh, if they take out 91, they can make progress to get towards 95 and they fill a gap. Um, so if they dip next week, this week, into 86 and 84, I would get long, if I'm not long, as a trade, and I would stop out at a specific pain level. Uh, check this out. This was my target on the way down. Look at where they went. And then they recovered. And this was the upside that they they started, and then they failed, and then they went down. So this didn't play out. Um, but now I can get long into two solid bounces. And if I lose the solid bounces, so maybe if I lose this one on a closing basis on the two-hour chart, I would say, screw it. This could develop into a, um, a disaster scenario down to like 74. But that scenario means the SPX is probably at 3,400, I'm estimating. And Apple is into the teens like before. So I think the scenario is to fade a little bit, come back and try to take these out. Right, Nick, somebody's asking if the iron condors that you do, do they all expire daily or do you do iron condors that expire weekly, monthly? No, they don't expire daily. Uh, I love the ones that expire daily. So the SPX um, this year became tradable every day. So was the SPY and I believe the QQQ as well. The IWM is almost there. Uh, so that's a gift. If you're active trader and you can be babysitting everything, you can do the intraday uh, uh, trades like that. But um, the Iron Condor is not strictly for that. I believe I shared a Disney Iron Condor setup that was an, um, recently, and um, I think it's playing out. I haven't checked it on it recently, uh, but it was on track. Um, right. Let's see here. These are two lines that I did, and I don't remember them. I said there's a breakout. It's resistance, but it's a breakout opportunity. They bounced off of support, give or take. They break out target one, target two played out, and then some. So if somebody bought calls on Disney on Friday, they're not in my group. <laughs> Nick, so okay, you already so talked about your... Yeah, you were going to do one of the stocks. Did you want to do another stock here, or did you but, want... But to first, over... I, want to, I want to... Listen... I, Zubair, I think it was, or Zuhair, I can't remember. Earlier, he, he, he was upset that we don't have a monthly um, membership and somebody else wanted a free trial. If you're serious about leveling up your game of trading or investing, or if you need help trading and investing, if you need help reading charts, if you need help learning options, if you need somebody that can listen to you anytime you have a question, whether it's on the weekend or during the day, we're offering you, Benzinga and I, I don't work for Benzinga. I choose to work with them for over 10 years because they do things right. Uh, you know, nobody's perfect, of course, but they're always striving to be perfect. And the service has been around forever. And we wouldn't be doing this. We, we would have run out of people if we were churn and burn. There are people that are with me for eight years. So it's not for everybody, but everybody can benefit from it. And if you break out the cost by signing up, I don't know what the cost is right now, but if you break up the cost of what it's going to cost you for a year, by the amount of help you would get, it's literally cheaper than coffee. It's, I'm not kidding. You do the math. And because you have a sounding board at any point in time, I bet you everyone here, uh, tell me if, you, if you're not, put a one in there if you don't have a question about a stock or about a trade you have or about a trade you think you're going to have and you would like at least one opinion on it. You will have 300 opinions on it any day in my room. So if you're the person that's here and you don't have a question that you could use help with, 
um, put a one. I challenge you. If you don't have a question on a, on a chart or on a trade you have or on a trade you would like to take, uh, everybody has those questions. So we have a place where we can get you the answer. And I promise you, if, it, if I don't know the answer, I will go learn it. Like somebody said, Biogen. I don't trade uh, biotech companies and medical companies because they are liable for headlines. I sell risk and I don't want to sell risk into unknowns, but we could look at the stock in a little bit later. Uh, UNH, I sh shorted it or went long. I traded UNH for the group successfully. I did not re-engage with it because it was trying to hold a long-term support. And also it wasn't very liquid for options. Um, the chart for UNH. Let me see here. I warned against losing this level could open up a huge downside, which is not likely, but it is there. Uh, so I don't want to know if UNH is going to the 460. Right. Nick, I so think I shorted it via credit call spread. I'm fairly certain. Nick, uh, Joe is asking a quick, Joe's a member. He's asking um, the, the video from the Sunday session that you did today, that's going to be posted in the chat room, right? That's always posted there. The video tonight will post tonight, yes. In the chat room, it'll be there like every Sunday. Now, the video for the tickers, there won't be one this Sunday because I wasn't at my office to do the homework. But I'm here to answer all the questions about specific stocks. But the homework on the overall um, market direction for this week and, and, and longer, I have some pretty good ideas. Okay. So. Yeah. So we've talked about diagonals, credit put spreads, condors, <clears throat> um, calls, put education, investor psychology, tips and tricks, right? MTs and T's. And, you know, you are, I don't think you already, you already talked about your best friend, Jerome Powell. Have you already talked about the energy sector? I know you have, you've always had some contrarian trades. I remember with the TLT, everybody on TV, CNBC was one way. You were, you know, on your own there calling and ultimately you were right. So yeah. you're not the so, follow the so, kind of guy. Right? So you packed a lot in there. Let me answer the person, Michael, how many, how many trade you give out? I don't want you to think of me as a trade alert. Okay. If you're with me in the live room, hundreds a week. If you're with me in the live room, officially, I, I share one written up trade for people who are not in the live room uh, per day, sometimes for a week. Um, so it is, um, if you're taking, if you're joining for trade alerts, I think you're missing the best benefit. You will have one a day, but I think you're missing a huge, huge part of it, which is education. I, I don't want to teach you how to fish. I want you to find a fishing pole that suits you and then learn how to fish. So uh, energy, I think, is a, a lie. There is no energy crisis. There's an energy policy, idiotic energy policy. That's not a political statement. Um, the fact that energy prices are completely manipulated by an entity that hates us, OPEC. Everybody in OPEC, most everybody in OPEC hates the U.S. They would have it disappear off the map of the earth. There'd be, there'd be a celebration there. Uh, so the OPEC is, they, they band together to control flow and price. And I can tell you, I think oil will be under $60 this year, if not before the first half. Because I think, I have a theory that I can't prove. Let's see if it plays out. If you shorted oil with me, every time I shorted, you lost one time. There was one Exxon put that didn't play out. One Exxon put before that was a huge win. X, X, XLE many times shorted it, although it's tricky, and, and went long it and didn't iron condor and played out. So oil will be lower. So if you're buying Exxon because it's cheap, I think you're opening yourself for a potential, not a guarantee, of a giant blindside. Because, oh, the PE is 12 or whatever, super cheap. Yeah, what if... What if the E disappears? How can the E disappear? If, if, if I'm right about the oil price collapsing, then uh, the E disappears. And then the P would be huge. And then the PE will suddenly go, wait, last month the PE was 12. Now it's 25. How did that happen? Because the E disappeared. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Do I trade Forex? Fatty, I shorted the dollar, but I don't trade Forex like pair, pair trades. I shorted the dollar... And it was tough, 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 tough for the group, tough, tough, tough using the UUP. 
uh, bought straight up puts. And then one day, I think it was like 11.10 or 11.11, whatever, when, when the market spiked on the stupid CPI report, that was so bad. Uh, the UUP collapsed and it gave us a 40% win. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so Fatty, I think you belong in the group. Cindy, you belong in the group. I'll, I'll answer your TSM for you. Um, TSM. So I'm avoiding anything that has to do with Taiwan just because it's a semiconductor company. So first of all, as a semiconductor company, I would rather be long the market because semiconductors have special circumstances, a shortage of this, blah, blah, blah. And then Taiwan has the other circumstance of being a Taiwan headline with the US and China, whatever. So not my favorite. Technically, I love the fact that they just on the daily made a higher low and there is a lower high. So you can see how it's coming pinched. Uh, the battle is going lower highs, that's fine. Higher lows, that's great. So um, if they take this out, I think they end up here. But um, so let's say in the next couple of days or a couple of weeks, they get to here, they pop out, they come back to here, take this out, pop out, come back to here, take this out. So they, in effect, started an ascending channel. There's no proof of it. They need to hold this. First of all, these are, I don't like these. So... If they come down to here, I will get long into this. All right, next, coin. Forget it exists. If you own it, why? Uh, I own crypto trades. I use crypto.com not because it's the best, because it's the doors are still open. Whew. So trading crypto is super profitable for me. I've yet to lose money overall on crypto. And... Um, the, I've said for months and months, the riskiest part of trading crypto is not the stock price because I nailed the charts. So I know I did not get blindsided. Um, the, the riskiest part of trading crypto is where do you put your money, right? I've said that for a long time. And then we had this FTX problem. So now the crypto sphere is having a 2008 financial crisis that the banks had in regular money. So in 2008, the banks went bankrupt. Everybody's making fun of crypto. The banks went bankrupt based on fraud. The crypto went bankrupt based on bad management and maybe some fraud in there. So in 2008, banks folded, hundreds of them folded. The FDIC had to pay them out, the people that had money in there, the FDIC insured, right? Uh, this is no different. So it's not like, oh, crypto sucks because this happened. Uh, Bank of America sucks because it went through it in 2008. So... If everybody went to Bank of America and asked for their money out today, Bank of America will be in deep trouble tomorrow morning. That is a fact. You go to your bank and try to get 10 grand out of it or 50 grand out of your bank. You will not be able to get it. You will need an appointment to show up for them to bring you the money because they don't have it. The, that's what banks do. Well, these kid, crypto kids don't know what to do. <laughs> so they got stuck in the same problem. Big banks got stuck in 2008. So I have my money in crypto.com so far. So good. Every time it hangs up while I'm lo logging in, it's like, oh, oh, this is the day where I can't get my, my money. So I am trading very well. I am pretty profitable in crypto. Well, whether I have my money or not in six months, that's the biggest risk. So far, so good. I like what the company is doing. Um, they're still advertising, so they still have some cash to do that, I, at least. Uh, if you want to trade crypto without the risk of where to put your money, I think the easiest one would be BITO, B-I-T-O, which I traded for the group several times, profitably. Um, bearish call spread, each coin. So coin, I don't like because uh, Wall Street doesn't like it. Whether it's making money or not, it doesn't matter. Call or put on Lockheed Martin, uh, Iron Condor, <laughs> Chris. Let me pull it up. I shorted it twice for the group. And then when it dropped, because we won on the shorts via credit call spread, um, Lockheed Martin, LMT, I then went long it with a credit put spread. We ended up with an iron condor and they played out. So look at my chart. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Up here, I, I said it was too high. It can still come down to 453 if they don't um, take out 490 soon. Let me see here on a two-hour chart. 
so the battle is i mean these are tough peaks to break out so i think they are vulnerable to come bleed down into the 450s uh, if you force me i would not buy a call i would buy a put but i wouldn't do that either i would sell a call spread personally jd.com you're bearish okay so i don't know how to pronounce your name jody anyway so jd bearish if you short it you might be surprised now a uh, caveat i'm not trading chinese stocks because of the headlines over there i don't know anything about it so here's what's going on that people are not talking about so we had covid the world closed china closed the world reopened china stayed closed now all i know is what they're telling me in the news i heard uh, two three months ago whatever recently that some people were locked into their buildings and they burned to death or injured because they couldn't leave because physically locked. The lockdown is a physical lockdown, which wasn't the case in the US. So if that's the case, and that prompted them to overturn these policies and open up the country. So it is it's now they've been hiding from COVID for two years or three years. And now they're catching up with the infections and death. And that is so sad. But let's talk business. What if what is the impact? of reopening the country. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to think about it. What is the impact of reopening China? The I think the most populous country in the world, billion and a half, 1.6 billion um to doing business again. And what's the impact on the rest of the world? Is that a bullish thesis that nobody's considering, not many people are talking about? I don't know. So I wouldn't short JD. It's a good company. I wouldn't short Baba. It's a good company. I'm not long either. But caution, let's look at the chart. I haven't looked at the chart in a long time. So literally, it's in a resistance zone. But look at the size of this breakout from here. Has a target about here and many failures. So let's say they dip into 56, below 60. Technically, I would get long because this chart, whether it's JD or not, I don't care. If it dips into here, I expect the machines to try to buy it up here and then it doing this. And then if it takes this out, look out above. This would be the target for JD. Uh, but instead of buying calls here when they failed before, if you bought calls on whatever day that was, I think you made a mistake. You opened yourself up to a potential mistake. I would buy calls on the dip or on the breakout. So because you cannot do this and expect to be perfect with your entry. So on the dip, and I don't know where, but somewhere in here would be a better entry to catch this and then the eventual breakout from here. And then they come down here, just like the other one, they'll start building an ascending channel. And before you know it, they're buying dips rather than selling rips all the way down to here. So the bottom process is a U-shaped recovery. Everybody wants these V bottoms. They don't work very well. Right, you need Nick, a U shape. Really quick here. So uh, shout out Life in San Miguel. Welcome to the family. Let's go. All right. So look, guys, typically Nick only does this for a little while. Um, but today he's being very gracious with his time. He's, he's going to stay for longer from what I understand here. So he's packed. He's got a full 12 pack of bag under his seat. So um so yes, folks, this is, you know, this is pretty packed. What you're seeing now is really what you would be seeing in the live room, right? Nick does this all day, the entire day, literally 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. And then Sundays, plus the email stuff he sends out. So he's pretty busy, as you can tell, but he's busy with the chat numbers. He's busy there all day with you. Everything that you see here is what you get pretty much. No, no joke. We answer questions um, all day, every day. And speaking of time, I need to bolt out of here. I can hear rustling outside and... A family engagement. So, uh, what what do you want us to do to do last, and then we'll call it a. You're well, welcome, Chris. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like I look. I guess a quick recap here of um, of the session. You know, shortly, especially, and and what the members need to look at. Why the members should join the chat room. Um, joining the chat room. Uh, so okay, if you want to do something, you're welcome, Manny. Every. Uh, uh, you shouldn't ever trade alone again, ever. What does that mean? You shouldn't trade without a group of people where you can jump in a room. Imagine having 300 trading partners that could help you trade. Just imagine that. How powerful is that statement? I'm going to give you 300 traders a day that would help you with your trade. If you don't trust my skills, 
I guarantee you, you're going to find somebody in the group that you will end up asking them instead of asking me. Um, and if you don't, if you don't believe in our skills of charts, almost every day we nail the SPS, XP, SPX and SPY close within a very tight margin from the beginning of the day or a couple of hours into the day. If you don't know your schmutz, you can't do that. We, knew, we know our charts, we know our options, we know our skills, we know our strategies, we can answer excellent questions. And I'm saying we because it's me and 300 traders. Um, a couple of dozen of them keep us updated on the algo flow and the unusual options activity on several different levels. So it's not a one man, it's not a one man show. Uh, I, I help keep us organized and I keep the order in there, but it's a team effort. And if you want to trade with 300 people, if you want, I'm not asking to be in the room. You can pop in the room and ask a question and you'll have 300 answers. Um, join the group. How much is that worth? To me, it was price. It's price. I wish I had anything like that when I was trading on my own. More cowbells. Right, Nick. So I appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot for being here in the session. Always helping out the members. I'm going to stick around here. I'll show them the chat room. The new, I don't know if you saw it, but they, it totally pimped out. It looks new. Uh, they just made a redesign of it. Um, but I'll be showing them that and some of your trades and videos. Is there any video in particular, Nick, that you think that I should show them? Um, j just, um, let's see. No, because we don't know their skill level. So you should, uh, uh, when, they, when they log in, they should start at the skill level. I would uh, just start from the beginning. There's one that says, what's a put option? What's a call option? What's a, what's a spread? What's a credit spread? Just go down the line and uh, educate yourself on options. Even if you don't want to trade options, I'll tell you why. Let's say you wanted to buy calls in Apple or buy shares in Apple. And you don't know what are the odds of Apple being at $180 in six months or a year. Well, that information exists in the options chain. I will show you where it exists. You can go to the options chain and get an exact figure what the market makers who actually place all the prices think of Apple going to 180 in a year or six months. You can get an actual number, like a percent, like 80% chance this will happen. So 70 or 17 or 20. So then you'd know how realistic you are in your thesis. You don't need to trade the options. You just need to know what it says. And then you trade, how, you trade however you want. All right. So I'm going to get out of here. I, I saw some pretty nice comments here. I appreciate you, Mitzi, for example. Uh, um, Jay, Cindy, we have a lot of women. I'm, incur I'm saying that because I want to encourage women, more women to join. And they're active. And um, some of them are technicians like chartists. It's pretty cool. All right, Nick Shaheen, lead trader at the Options Inner Circle chat room, lead educator, lead mentor, guider, trading partner, everything best. <laughs> Jack of all trade. trade. <laughs> yeah, he does everything. Yeah. All right, man, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the chat room. Let's go. Later. All right, folks, that's Nick Shaheen. I told you he's the real deal. Um, but basically, I'm going to show you a little bit of the platform. It just got revamped. A uh, big shout out there to Vin, Tammy, Neil. Let's go. Another shout out. Basically, this whole thing, right, where it says my dashboard, um, you will have all of these trades. Remember, you're getting 20 email trade alerts a month. This is kind of like your dashboard homepage where you can see all the trades. You have a full layout calendar with everything that you need to know there, stock splits. You can set it all up. You also have your uh, chart there so that you can quickly go through something that you're looking at from your uh package here from the trades that you're getting right um you also have this why is it moving this is a great tool um it basically we do have somebody in the back well not in the back but in the office right and they are scanning the markets for price action and they are allocating that price action to a specific uh to the stock obviously right like why this stock is moving in either direction so this is a great place if you're looking at some volatility or what's happening certain type of news this is something you are not paying for this. This is this data that we you know allocate from Benzinga. Remember, we're a news company. Um, trade news, right? Things that are happening out there. You also have top gainers and top losers, right? So that you can see what is actually happening in the markets. You don't have to spend up, you know, 10 hours researching, doing all this stuff. It's all there for you. Here you have all the trades and setups that have been put out. Now, 
on the left, on top here, you can see SPY, Q, Diamond, Bitcoin. This is a total, total like new look. It's great. It's great. It's great. It was launched like I think a week ago. Um, so the, here you have the labeled out trades. Then you have the chat room. This is where everybody's at, where Nick is at the entire day. I'm going to show you some of the videos there. Um, David, no, this is a different site, but um, you can in the link you'll be able to get into this particular uh, room for Nick. All right, one second. Okay, so in this room, you see there's two channels, right? Nick's important messages and inner circle chat. So in the inner circle chat, everybody's posting, everybody, you know, Stevie B, I remember signing him up, he says, thanks, Tango, everybody's giving him a good welcome. Um, now he knows his chat name, he's from Quebec, talking to Tango. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, this is what it's all about. The community is there. As soon as you sign up, someone will, you know, and these are like people that are in the chat room, right? Uh, this is a great community. It's a workplace. People come here to make money and learn. It's that simple. This is what the chat room is all about. Empowering you as a retail trader so that you can benefit of having 300 people basically with you the entire day. So in the inner circle chat, again, everybody's posting. In Nick's important messages, that's where you're going to find the link to the live session. So every morning he will post this note <clears throat> and this session right here. So this is the link, you download this, you put in the code and you'll be good to go. Once you go in there, that's where the live session is where he, um, no, we do not accept Bitcoin as uh, payment, Robert. Um, we should maybe. So, so yeah, you click there and it goes to the live session, which is open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. That's where what you saw today, you got a little glimpse of it, right? Like that's what he does the entire day, Monday to Friday. So that's the link. That's what you got to be looking for in the morning. Okay. Uh, he gives you a quick strategy for the day and a, a market update here. Below that, you're going to have all of the indexes charted out pre-market, which is really helpful. Before you even make a trade, you need to know where these things stand. That's why you have SPY as an example with all the levels. And you can, you'll, some people even use these um, and just use those for the day to trade. But this is just a, a glimpse of what you know, we can expect for the trading day once the market opens, right? Uh, you have the QQQ, IWM, futures, and of course, market commentary throughout the day. Also, if you go to the inner circle chat, he's posting there, he's talking with people, as you can see, very commonly back and forth. So he's in both chat rooms. He's, he's in this chat room, in the blue chat room. This is open 24 seven, it never closes. And the live session where he's sharing his screen, that's 8 a.m. Um, so 5 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the videos here. Actually, I'll show you one, but he said it not, but we can show you one maybe. Um, all right, so this is an example, right? This is an example of, because this video is not from yesterday or nothing. This is from last Monday. I mean, if you guys want to watch it, we can watch it, but it's from last Monday. It's just going to kind of give you a sense really of um, of how the structure of the videos are, right? Then the other thing was the education videos. For the people that are new, that don't know a lot about options, uh, we do have this getting started skit, uh, kit. It is, it's uh, Nick Shaheen's private library where he has um, you know, the, basically everything you need to get started, everything else you can learn it as you go, right? So understanding what are options and puts, this is, you know, basics, basic stuff, right? Then what is a spread? You have different types of spreads, but this is really the video that will kind of summarize it all, right? Call options, definitions, uses, it's important, right? <clears throat> then you have credit put spreads. This is what he does the most in the chat room. It's his main thing. Then when to book or set a stop loss, when and how to book profits. Risk management, very important risk management. And then what type of trade is best? How to pick what type of trade to buy, right? There are credit put spreads, iron condors, butterflies, diagonals, selling calls and selling puts and doing all different types of trades. And it's important to know when to use each one, right? That's the whole point of options. 
that you're not just doing the basic buy and hold, that you're being able to make money with different ways, you know, regardless of what the market could do, right? So those are the educational videos. You can always follow up with Nick if you do have questions there. And let's just watch this video here to give you guys a sense of how this, this is the strategic market update video. It's separate from the Sunday session. The New Year, everyone. Nick here doing the strategy video for the first week of 2023. So let's uh, continue the theme of finding footing. So the goal this time, we rallied, just to recap, I know it's been a few days, we rallied almost 18% on the S&P, top left-hand corner, from here to here, and then we're giving back some. The goal for the last two weeks has been the one word I've been harping on, to find stabilization. And the last two weeks did deliver that. We did have violent moves within the week, but we ended up having some sort of a sideways move for two weeks. Um, the ones that were hit hardest were um, the mega caps, like Apple, for example. So hopefully now they've done selling them for tax purposes, and let's see what happens here. Um, so this week, the best thing to do would be to finish stabilizing. Uh, the goal is not to make it like every other um, give back from all the other uh, rallies. For example, in June, we bounced. And uh, sorry, in March we bounced, and we when we gave back, we gave back too much and made a new low. Uh, same, and this is the one that I want it to be different. That's why I'm I'm insisting on let's show some signs of going sideways, which we haven't done before. So let's hope about that. Let's hope for that. Um, so last week you can see the greenish greenish even on the Qs. Uh, the the Dow is probably the best shape, which is pretty bizarre, right here, and relative to the last three weeks. And the small caps are perfectly flat two weeks in a row. So this week, I'm looking for another quiet to greenish week. Even a little bit red would be fine. I just don't want giant moves. And I'll show you what's going on uh, as the market opened here on Monday night. So what numbers am I looking for? For example, on the SPX, if I go here and I go to SPX, I want to beat the prior two fails, which were recent. Um, so November here and um, December, and maybe even back to September. So we rallied, and we failed three times, arguably four, in the same zone, 41.10, 41.20, on the SPX, SPX, see that? So if you want to write numbers, 41.10 to 41.20. Going above 41.20 is, I bet the bears will be in trouble, because we could probably target here. What? Yes, we could. Not in a straight shot. We have prior fails to deal with, but it's definitely doable. So 41.10 is the first number, first number in my head. And uh, on, the, on the downside, of course, you don't want to go below that little spat we had at 37.60 not too long ago. And this is daily now, so about a week ago. Um, and also the base from November 5th, before that wild and crazy rally that we had on 10th. And, uh, you know, of course, not to lose this one, the 3490, 3500, if you want to round numbers. So... Again, the battle is still between 41.10 and the low that we put in in October, which was a pretty violent low. That's the SPX. On the SPY, you would be looking at 411, 412. So if I go back to the SPY here, same number. I mean, same time, zone, time frame, 411, 412. And the low last week was about 375. And these are bounces that are around 367 to 368. So I just gave you a whole bunch of numbers that if you are technically inclined, you can use those numbers. So if we break through this, the bears are somewhat in trouble because the target will become up here, but within a couple of different dips. So we get here, we drop, we get up a little higher, we drop, and then we establish an ascending trend channel. We have had a descending channel for over a year. What We've gone sideways. What we want is to build an ascending channel. You kind of see the picture now? That's why I said stabilization. Let's go sideways a little bit so we can start building up. In a way, uh, there are headline, uh, potentially emotional headlines that could move the markets one way or another, uh, but I don't anticipate them to be game changers because the data should be just as garbage as usually. The first one is uh, the, 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 that, that CNBC will probably focus on, which is um, the Fed minutes. So this is a conundrum to me because the minutes happened like three weeks ago, the meetings, and we know the outcomes they told us, and they've had like 15 or 20 different uh, 
speeches about it. So what's the mystery? I don't understand it. Yep, everybody just, oh my God, the FUD minutes are getting released. Okay, now on the on Friday, I believe, we do have a jobs number. And maybe on Thursday, we have the ADP preview of the jobs number, the private sector that doesn't include uh, government. So I believe that if we get a too strong of a number in the jobs, we might have a spat. Now, I want to caution you that this one is a little bit different. I've been reading headline after headline about... Um, Major companies like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, I don't remember who, but something along those caliber, starting to poke at the BLS jobs numbers. Now, if you've been with me for a while, I've called them crap for a long time, right? Yeah, hello. Now everybody's getting on the bandwagon of the government numbers are crap. Of course they're crap. They're phone calls. They make phone calls and they write them down and they probably fax them. So, yeah, they're crap. You can't build bridges based on data like that. But... What does that mean? Maybe this time the reaction is even a little bit more emotional or maybe a little bit less. Anyway, I don't know how to interpret it. All I know is they brought it up to the forefront. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, whoever it was, I think it was a couple of them. Maybe those are the two I'm, I'm talking about. Um, maybe even bigger than this. And they're focusing on, hey, your numbers are BS and um, they can't be right when the GDP is this or that. That's the argument. Okay, so just keep wiggle room. Um, if you have some credit spreads that expire this week, maybe you don't want them this week. Maybe you want to close them early before the jobs number. I don't know what it's, what's going to happen. All I know is I will try to trade off of it to see if I can make money off of the emotional reactions rather than try to guess which way it's going to go. So let's recap. Fresh year. Um, oh, I forgot. Let me show you what happened at the open. So uh, the futures opened and we soared uh, to 3,900. And um, and then we gave it all back. We're back to flat on the futures, which isn't bad news because I look at it. I have resistance, 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 resistance. You see those words? I didn't put them now. Those were there last week. And let me zoom back out and you'll see why we're failing at 3,900 because it's pretty allergic so far. <laughs> you can see how many uh, resistance lines there are. Why? Because that's what, that's what happens. When you have support and the support fails, every line you failed at before will become a problem to overtake. As long as you maintain a higher low trend, you don't give back too much. That's normal. So if we fade here and we spend a day or two to come back to here, that's normal. But it's not okay to come back to all the way down to here and rebuild everything. All right, so I'll update you on the levels in the morning note. But again, the overall theme still is stabilization, but with a little bit of progress towards the highs that just failed uh, November, December. So 41.10 on the SPX, 41.20 versus the recent lows that we held last week and the week before that and a couple of weeks before that. All right, folks, and that was just an example of the strategic market update session that Nick will do. Uh, there are different types of formats that he will put in here in the live session. <clears throat> and these are separate from these educational videos, right? They're different. Uh, let's see if we can find another good video here. There, something really quick we can show you um, to kind of give you a sense of really how the sessions are 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 done. Let's see. Hey traders, um, end of the year we closed it as far as trading is concerned. This week and last, I harped on the word stabilization. I wanted to explain it after the fact. So this is just a little blurb about that. I will have some more about how we closed and what happened and what is likely happened. So what what was I looking for stabilization? So this is a weekly chart for the S&P. And the visualization of that, the stabilization part is, so this year has been down but we have had rallies and every rally had a, a sell-off and in every sell-off we did not have stabilization so we, we had bounces but not stabilization and here is this last sell-off so we had the rally which was insane almost 18 percent and we had a sell-off and i'm looking for stabilization so here we had two weeks that closed about the same place in this case, they also opened about the same place. These are called dojis. They open close close together, back to back, two weeks. So what? 
we dropped from here to here. It felt like the end of the world, but now two weeks, we, we, we went sideways. So that is what I meant by I'm looking for, hey, stop, calm down. Let's do anything more up or down. Let's think about things. Let's stabilize, right? So that's the visual of it. So let's see here. We had a, a drop. I don't see the same. So I see red, 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 green, red, 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 red. So look, th this one was even worse. I told you the June correction was as violent as, as I've ever seen. Look at this. Uh, red, 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 giant green, red, red, red. There was no stabilization. Look at this one. There was no, no two weeks went sideways. So these two, these two weeks went sideways, and they opened and closed about the same place, and they had wicks. So now the battle is set. They're going sideways. So this next coming week is important. If we have another sideways move, then everybody comes down a little bit, and, and then the bulls and the bears will have equal opportunity to continue further. So I'm not saying this is great news. It just stops the panic drop. It slows everything down. And the only one that didn't have that quite as obviously is the uh, NASDAQ. For this one, you have to use interpretation. So these two candles, it doesn't look like stabilizing, but this one last week closed right here. This one this week opened and closed right here. So to a degree, we dropped, and sometimes last week we stopped falling, <coughs> and we had a whole week of not falling further on a closing basis. I could interpret that as stabilizing, but not as obvious. Um, the IWM is just like the SPY. And the Dow is not even close to anything. It made progress up. And the Dow is about 8% away from its all-time closing high, 8.8. .8. So under 9%. Okay. So this one is in great shape, but I don't trust it. So I just wanted to do a video about what the hell did I mean with this stabilization. I'm looking for stabilization. Well, this is what I'm looking for. A couple of weeks of bulls and the bears an equal opportunity to work this coming week. All right, folks, and that was another of the uh, type of video formats that Nick will provide the Inner Circle members. As you can see, they will be from different topics completely, but always regarding the markets and things that we can do. There's also an explanation here as well. Uh, with the market update, right, Mega Cap must participate. So you do get a lot of detailed into the strategy, right? You get details into the strategy for the week, for the day, and more importantly, don't forget the live session right here. You go in there, you join, it's live Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's the whole day, the entire day. You can be part of it. It's a great community. I launched these chat rooms, uh, this chat room with Nick over a year ago, and I can tell you it's been really, really successful for members as well, but it's also helped me individually as a trader uh, with options. So I can tell you it's something you do want to check out. I don't think there is a better community out there, not just for options, but also the community itself, engaging, participating, helping each other, helping new traders. Stevie B, great example right here. Um, Stevie just joined. I remember when he signed up. Um, he says, good day. I just joined the group this week and wanted to say hi. Cheers from Montreal, right? It's a global community. We have people from all out. So Tango Lima was nice to help him out. Welcome him. Um, and, you know, this is how it is the entire day. It's a great community to learn, to work with other people, like-minded individuals, like-minded traders that are genuinely trying to improve their trading and start making money <clears throat> in their trading career, right? You don't have to be losing money in trading. I've been telling you, a community is probably the best thing that you can do for yourself because from there, you're going to learn from all these people, right? These are all real traders. We don't have fake bots. We don't have fake accounts like uh, Reddit or Wall Street Bets or any of that stuff. These are all actual paying members, right? People that are in the chat room all day and they share things they have like this. Um, you know, everybody has their own analysis or tools maybe that they use and they pitch in, right? Um, they all come in together, see what this is. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but everybody's always sharing these sorts of, um, you know, things they have, let's see this. So yeah, I mean, feel free to do that as well. Doc is a great member. I don't know if Doc is in the house. If he is, 
Um, shout out to Doc, always helping out new members, golden member status, in my opinion. Um, because every time there's new members out there, I've always seen him and help, and, and people even tell me, you know, that he's helping out all these new members that go in there. And that's just to show you a little bit of the energy, right, that we harness in the chat room. It's a great community. I'm, I'm not just saying it, I'm showing it to you here, right? But putting that aside, right, the community, uh, once you actually get into Nick's trades, uh, I'm sorry, to Nick's session, this is where you want to uh, go, right? That's the main question. I'm getting it. Stanley says that he just signed up. We got to we got to check that here. Um, and the education videos are separate. And remember, Nick is going to keep adding on those videos. He's going to keep putting in new material, new content, uh, so that like you, you just got to ask him, right? And you can also even go to the live session. Um, and just ask him while he's live hey nick can you explain this to me right so we do have to give a shout out here it is official we have mr uh mr stanley mr stanley welcome stanley cmng we got to give him a warm welcome everybody welcome to the family here stanley. Okay. all right all right okay stanley make sure that you are in there tomorrow morning okay there's a lot to unpack there Every day is a day you can make money in the market. That's why it's important to be there as much as you can. Um, <clears throat> and even if, by the way, I did forget to mention, uh, we just launched push notifications. So whenever, <clears throat> whenever Nick is posting in this, in this channel, right, you will get a notification. The only thing that you need to do is go to your store, your Apple store, Play store, whatever you have on your phone, download the Benzinga app, and log in with your credentials that you have your membership. If you do that, you will get alerts for everything that goes out via push notification, including uh, messages from the chat room that Nick is posting here, right? When he's posting market updates, wildcards, trading, what did I do? What, I, what, I, what did I not do, right? And more importantly, as soon as that chat room opened, this post about 8.30 a.m., right? So he will post at about 8 a.m. or so, average time, uh, 8, 8.30, and you will get a push notification on your phone when he will post this. And this includes the, um, the market update, the price action, what is the S&P doing, what levels are we looking at, support, resistance, what are, what are we actually looking at in the chart, right? And then you also have the strategy, but more importantly, this is where you want to go, live session. That's open Monday to Friday. If you need help, if you want education, if you want to learn how to trade, if you want to bounce your ideas with somebody, if you want to discuss a trading strategy that you are working on, I know a lot of algo people, a lot of uh, math trader type of people that have reached out to me that they're working on uh, certain types of algorithms that they're trying to do, models and systems, and they would like to kind of bounce their ideas with someone. Well, you know, Nick Shaheen is the perfect guy for that. We have a lot of different tools and things like that. Um, one of the good tools that I recently saw they added in your dashboard, this is all new, like one week new. Okay, so now you will get, uh, well, you get all the trade setups there. You can pick up, you have a charting system as well. So if you want to look at Tesla, for example, you know, because it's on your, it's on, you know, the stocks you're trading at, right? In your portfolio here that you're trading with Nick. Um, you can actually watch this live real time. Keep in mind, these are minute to minute charts. These are not, uh, you know, you can, you can see them there as they're actively updating. You also have a full calendar here where you can actually look at what's happening in the month and just pull up the agenda, right? This is really good. Let me tell you why. If you don't know what's happening in the markets, you're going to make huge mistakes. One time I forgot there was a Fed meeting and then, you know, I com completely, I was not, you know, that was my mistake. And ever since then, a long time ago, I started always using a calendar. Okay. You need a calendar to just be organized in your life. But if you're a trader, like you depend, like it, it's really important that you know what's happening is what I mean, right? Because a certain number could be coming out. You're not aware of it and it could be impacting the same trader you're thinking of. So um, this is why I think it's great that we have this agenda. You can see retail numbers are coming up year over year. This, these, these are going to be important for these targets, Roth, um, you know, just retail sales in general, right? Uh, MB 10-year bond auction. 
crude oil imports, if you guys are trading energy, gasoline production, distillate fuel production, gasoline inventories, you have the CPI, of course, and obviously year over year, month over month, um, trade balance. I mean, there, there's just a lot of um, a lot of things happening January 11th, actually. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, there's definitely this is going to be a packed week. This is going to be a packed week. I think you definitely should not be trading alone, at least not this week. Um, a lot of things. Seem you can see also the uh, symbols in the top right here. You can see that Bitcoin is actually moving. Looks like it's going green. Um, so it's really good to have all these things in front of you, uh, because if you don't know, uh, like, you know, what's happening around you, right? It, it's really hard for you to kind of find your place. So knowing what SPY is doing, what Qs are doing, let me add, look, you can even add these to certain watch lists. So um, Bitcoin, right? It's important to have all these things here, top gainers. You also have this, um, as you can see, this ticker, rolling ticker of all these stocks. So it's really good really to give you like a certain like office look, office type um, setting where you can focus on your trading, right? Then you have all these updated trades here. You'll get 20 trade alerts by email a month. And then you get the live room, which has a, like five to 10 uh, live trades, right? <clears throat> I can't show it now because it's not open, but uh, it opens 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. on Fridays, right? So um, are can you help with the trade? Um, I blew up. So Chris says I blew up my weekly trades because of missing CPI numbers. It happens, man. Like people make mistakes. You know, ju you just have to kind of find the tools to help you. That are not, you know, those are pretty. There are certain mistakes that you can kind of um, like remember. Like you know, don't go all in. Like you know, certain things that are like you know, right? Like rule of thumb. But then missing out a number, it can happen to anybody if you don't have like um. If you don't have a calendar, right? Especially if you're not in the community that, trust me, all these people are looking at one. Um, and also because they have access to it, right? In this platform, which again, it looks really good. A big shout out to all the people that worked on it on the back end. Um, so yeah, this is what it's all about, folks. Helping you become better traders. I think we've covered a lot. We've covered everything. I covered the, uh, the live room with Nick, how it works, the schedule. Um, if you have questions, you know where to reach out. If anybody does have questions, you can still post them now while we're here before we do wrap this up. But yeah, that's right, correct. It's the annual and the other one. The trade alerts still are sent by email by default. The, the 20 email trade alerts are sent by email, but then you can sign up for text alerts if you want for free. Uh, there's no cost for that, right? I mean, not for you at least. So you just put in your number and you get the text, the text alerts. Right, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Jenny. All right, sounds good. So listen, folks, this has been a great session. Big shout out to all you guys for being here, guys and girls. Thank you. Uh, and make sure that if you're in the live room, be there in the morning. We have a lot to cover. It was a great session. Uh, Nick is always amazing. If you do want to follow Nick, if you do want to learn more from Nick Shaheen, from his strategies, from his trading room, you already know where to contact, right? We put that in the chat. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the chat room tomorrow. Big shout out to everybody. Let's go.